Les ennemis se scattered. His miracles will be performed. The strong man will bound, no longer able to hinder. I should have got right. Being zealous of the spirit. your eyes be open open up my eyes let my eyes be open open up my eyes 
that I might see, O oh God, that there's more here with me than with my enemy. Here I am. Holy Ghost and power. Here I am. Heaven now, signs and wonders. When God is moving, signs and wonders. When God is moving, let Him move through you. In prophecy and tongues and interpretation of tongues and praise and thanksgiving and dancing and Shouting. Oh, let the Holy Ghost play you like an instrument of praise. Yield yourself to Him, to heaven, to the glory round. There's a glory round. Ha. There's a glory round the Father. The glory round of Christ Jesus. The glory round the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. My eyes be open. That I might see that there's more with me than my enemy. That I might see that there's more with me than all with the enemy. That you've given us now all power and authority over all the powers of darkness. Let boldness and confidence arise in you. Let faith embolden you. Let authority take hold of you. You speak to every mountain that's standing in your way. Every hindrance you run through. Them. Let God arise. His enemies be scattered. The word of faith be all that you will believe and know. The God our eyes and his enemies be scattered. Mm. Believing for the impossible. You, O oh God, are the God of miracles. If you'll press in, if you'll keep the press on it, you'll break through. If you give yourself to the Holy Ghost, He'll teach you how to be so bold and confident and brave that you'll take out the lion. To teach you how to move in such faith and confidence in Him that you'll take out the bear. He'll raise you up to take out, take out the giant that causes everybody to spare and turn you into a deliverer and a savior in Zion. Ha <laughs> ha. A branch in the vine. Hallelujah. A member in the body of Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Servants of the Most High God! Servants of the Lord! You know, Ezra had no special visitation that we know of. Nehemiah had no special visitation that we know of. 
They had been given honor. They had been given prestige. They had been given great wealth. They had been given great position in the kingdom of the Medes and of the Persians. But they had the word of the prophet that said this is the time and the hour for which God has commanded His people to return into the place that He ordained for them to live. And they stepped out and they gave their whole being and risked their whole lives to make sure that took place in their intercessions with the king. They took their place of authority that God had given them. They took their place of influence. Mordecai said to his niece, who he had taken as his daughter, Esther, he said, consider this. That you were born for such a time as this that God has brought you to a place of influence. He's given you what you have right now so that deliverance could come through you. And if you be unwilling, God will raise up someone else beside you. There's too few people who are willing to risk their influence. And you know, if you don't risk everything that you have at such a mediocre level, how much less would you risk what you had if God raised you up to such a place as Nehemiah and Ezra, such a place in a position of Esther, where now you have all the influence, you have your whole life before you, you, the, you bear, you the one who gives the cup to the king, you're the one who gives counsel to the ruler of the, of the world at the time. Everything's going your way and things to your benefit and it's best that you just keep your mouth shut and don't run any risk here. These men had no special visitation but the word of the Lord. They came by a prophet. Ha. Ha. Who some people even doubted whether he was really the prophet, but most had to say, no, everything that Jeremiah said came to pass. He must be prophet. They had no group of theologians. They had no 2,000 years of church history and people pouring over manuscripts to validate and verify that, yeah, this is what was written. This is what was said. This is truly what he said. But they had a passion. They had a vision. They had a purpose in God. And that word was to them, if nothing else, it would be a place of hope that, yeah, God would allow us to be who he called us to be and created us to be. But the reality of it was it was more than a word of hope. It was a word of faith. It was a word that caused them to lay down their life, to risk everything that they had, to recognize that their influence at the place and position that they now held at that point in time was a God thing for them to put upon an altar of sacrifice and use to see his people return unto him. To see there come a revival, which is the true definition of revival under Nehemiah and Ezra. Every person standing here in this place and listening to me right now on the web or perhaps on a YouTube, God has given you a place of influence. You may not understand what it is, but it's every place where you're liked. It's every place that, where, that you have favor. It's every place where you receive your daily allotment if you would to live the father wants you to begin to have a wisdom and an understanding of how to utilize that the father would love to raise up statesmen who speak by the spirit Nehemiah was a statesman who could speak the word of the Lord Ezra was a statesman and boy were, their pa were they passionate about it I pray today, I pray tonight that you're in this place in San Diego, California, that there would be birthed in your life such a passion for God as it was in a young man named Evan Roberts in 1904 who led one of the great moves of God in the earth, that there would be such a passion and such a longing that was birthed in the heart and life of a man we call Pop Seymour who no matter what obstacles he faced, no matter what situations he encountered that opposed him, no matter what persecution, no matter what rejection, he was after one thing, he was after that which Jesus Christ poured out upon anyone who hungers and thirsts after.
I'm going to tell you something. You can never have it with the disposition you have right now. You're not hungry enough. It's just you're just being amused. It's just entertaining words. It's just concepts to you. It has never struck your heart. Because when it does, there's a different response. But I'm going to tell you right now, that's why we're crying out God to God and obeying God. And, and it's prophetically singing to you and speaking by both tongues and interpretation of tongues and prophecy and revelation. Oh God, open up our eyes that we may see what's going on in the heavenlies. That we may understand what you're doing so that we may do it with you. To recognize, oh God, that it's more with us than are with them. People just make everything that God's doing into something little casual thing that was there to entertain them for the moment. People, your life is much bigger than this. And Father's plan for a, a world around you is, is absolutely critical. Bob is just looking for some people who will believe and quit being entertained. It's a problem. You know, it, it, it's a problem. It, it, listen to your people. It's a problem. When you got a bunch of people gathered around the prophet and he sounds beautiful. His poetry, which is nothing more than the word of God going forth from his lips, is like a pleasant song that they enjoy listening to. And that when he prophesies, he's like one who plays an instrument very well. And they delight to hear it. But it never changes them. It never becomes a living thing inside of them. Tonight, God, the Holy Ghost is crying out. And if you begin to cry out with him, instead of being a spectator, and being so fascinated by all the things that you can have in this world and being also caught up in how you can be conformed to the world rather than conformed to Jesus Christ. Because when you bring it down, more people are interested tonight in being conformed to the world and having worldly stuff and having worldly fame and having worldly interests than they are in being conformed to Jesus Christ and suffering and, and partaking of a fellowship and giving themselves over to rejection and giving themselves over to a banishment as you if you would that the glory of God may be revealed in their midst and in their lives Papa's looking for a people who he could make valiant he is Yehoah Sabaoth or the he is God the Lord Almighty he is the Lord of armies hallelujah hallelujah Listen, Father's not listening. Your father's not looking to raise up an army who just knows how to holler and shout and sing. His army moves by his spirit with his divine power and authority. Their weapons are signs and wonders and miracles and faith. And authority over all unclean spirits to cast them out. And they're not shy about it. They're bold about it. And they don't give up and they're not somehow just flipping about what they're doing and just kind of accommodating to the situation. They're aggressive. They're aggressive. They're aggressive. They're set. they fixed. Their heart's fixed. Hallelujah. This is your time to prophesy. For too long, the many have watched, stood around and watched the few anointed of God speak in tongues and interpret the tongues and prophesy they've been caught away with the anointing in one imagine what your meeting would be like tonight if the only only authority and the only anointing that could be expressed is what's being expressed to you right now would it be a, a night full of the, the glory of God or would it be one of those dry meetings would it be a good meeting or would it be a move of God because there's a big difference between a good move, meeting and a move of God. A move of God's come where people are sincerely respond to Him. Begin to lay hold on Him. Begin to long for these things more than anything else. They begin to long. Hallelujah. They begin to long. Huh? Hey, they begin to long. Hallelujah. Ah, my mind today. And they don't long in such a way as though they're waiting for a day to come. They begin to long in such a way that they don't st they're not willing to stand idle by anymore. But go ahead and move in the faith which God has given and begin to execute the word that God has spoken. And begin to lay down their life for everything that God has promised. To begin to move that way with no seeming you know, witness around them or sign around them that it's going to work out. 
You know, when Ezra got finished declaring the things to the king about how great God was and how mighty God was to save, and through that word he convinced the king to not only let him return to Jerusalem, but also to take finances and go. He knew that he was risking his life and that there were too many people waiting to kill and destroy him and to steal the money from him. But he says he was too embarrassed to ask the king for any protection because he got, just got finished telling him how mighty God was. Those are rare people. Those are rare people. Those are rare people. I said those are rare people. I said that's rare. I said that that's as precious as, a, as, a, as, that, as that rare commodity of gold. I, I think the, the prophet said the golden, gold wedge of Ophir. I'm telling you right now, I'm devoted to being rare. If I was sick, I wouldn't tell nobody because I'm devoted to being rare. If I was poor, I wouldn't let nobody know about it because I'm devoted to being rare. If I, was, if I was downcast or overwhelmed, nobody would be able to earn it because I'm devoted to being rare. Not common, not ordinary, not just everyday gravel. But rare, rare, precious, something that goes in the jewel, the, the, a jewel that goes in the crown of his majesty, and not just any majesty, the majesty of almighty God. God's looking for some people's willing to be rare. God's looking for some people that are willing to be precious. Mm. I've, seen, I've seen people that said they would go, but they never did. And I've seen people that said they would not go, and they did. And I pray tonight that you will be the people, no matter what your first response was, that you'll be the people that will. Monday a sepona ekina moshipa and ekea po ota. Ile mountain ganda ili bishte kerenea patono manipa. Ikana no moshikala na me etia mana. Now just let the Spirit of the Lord begin to speak through you. So many of you have learned how to yield your members and the anoint to the anointing of tongues. Well, now it's time to learn how to yield your members to the anointing of thanksgiving and praise that comes forth as prophecy. Hallelujah. I tell you right now, you start talking more about God and it'll come as a flow. Hallelujah. You start talking more to God and I'm telling you, it'll come as a flow. There was a time in my life where I felt like, wow, my, the, the preaching, I didn't feel like it had authority and that it had power. And the Spirit of the Lord said, you're not talking to me enough. And I began to dedicate myself to talking to the Father. And as I began to talk with Him, all of a sudden the sound of my voice and the things that I was saying took on a whole new realm of splendor and authority to where I got absolutely persuaded that there's no way to begin to communicate the will and purposes of the Holy Ghost unless you know how to talk to Dad. Hallelujah. 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 Somebody said, well, I've been talking to him. Well, you keep talking to him and you keep the press on because you're going to find a breakthrough and your mouth's going to be filled with his word. Hallelujah. Woo. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. 
This is your time to begin to flow in the Spirit. To begin to function as a member in the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Ha <laughs> ha. To begin to enjoy the manifestation of the Spirit. You begin to get hungry. To be used by God. I'm telling you right now, you're not going to get disappointed. You just begin to give yourself to these things. And hallelujah. Ha. Ah, we begin to worship. We begin to sing. See, when the anointing of prophecy is here, anyone who's sensitive to that realm can begin to flow in it. It's just like when the anointing of tongues is there, anybody sensitive to that realm, it's just activated in them. It's just that simple. It's that same way with the interpretation of tongues. You've got to become sensitive to these things in the spirit. It's when the anointing of miracles are here. You can begin, if you're sensitive to that realm, if you'll give yourself to that realm, immediately you'll begin to feel the faith and the authority and the unction of the Holy Ghost for miracles. Same way with every dimension of the working of the Spirit of God. What if you just got a dead blank draw? I said, what if you just got a dead blank draw to everything? Then you need the altar call tonight. The altar call will be for you. But you know what? The Lord wants you to fall before his presence like a like a alabaster box, like a bottle of fresh ointment and be broken. People want to come and bring who they are to God and say, God, how do you like this? No, the Father has given you and I an opportunity to exchange our life for his life. To be totally emptied of ourselves to be filled with him to be emptied of human knowledge i was reading today because today is a special day in the traditions of israel and um Without going in, give you Hebrew terms and phrases. These today is ending right now. The day that is celebrated every year. And especially there's a seasonal thing about it in terms of seasons. Just like you have a year of Jubilee every 50 years. There's special seasons in it. They're celebrating the destruction of both temples. The first and the second temple all happened on the same day at different time periods. First, the destruction of the temple during the invasion of, Babylon, of Bab the Babylonians. Then the destruction of the temple, the invasion of the Romans. Today, the Haradi, the Tremblers, began to Make an outcry against every hashiva that taught any Jewish student any secular knowledge. That the mind and the understanding and the psyche of men and the soul of men is too precious and too sacred to learn all these things that men hold valuable that are nothing more than idols and lies and vanities. I'm thinking, maybe we need to go join the church. No, God's just setting him up some people dedicated to him. They don't, they don't know him yet, but there's passion there for truth. There's passion there for truth. Papa's purpose to bring you and I to a place where we're supposed to be provoking Israel to jealousy. And I find myself getting provoked to jealousy by them as they're more dedicated to God than we are. Dedicated to his sacredness, dedicated to his holiness, dedicated to his purity, dedicated to his way. They don't put value on mathematics and science. Not the Haradi, not God's old people. Israel, secular Israel as a nation does, because they just like anybody else, they're just secular. They put value on the word of God and on knowing God. Huh? Even though they don't seek him. In the right way. But still they got. They got some powerful stuff. They got Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus. Numbers, Deuteronomy. Whew. Hmm? They got the prophets. 
They got the Chronicles, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles. Whoa. Psalms, Proverbs, Songs of Solomon, Jeremiah, Lamentation. I mean, come on, think about it. Whew. Huh? They got something. I'll tell you right now, the Word of God is powerful. Buddhists don't have that. Buddhists don't have that. Hindus don't have that. But yet still, they're separated from God. Even though they got the camp around His Word, they're separated from Him. Because they've gone about seeking their own righteousness and not submit themselves to the righteousness of God, which is only by faith in Jesus Christ. The righteousness which is of God, which can only come by be a, being made a new creation. But there's going to become a great, there's going to come a great awakening in Israel. And in that great awakening, 144,000 virtuous men are going to be changed and transformed by the power of God and become the witnesses of the Lord Jesus Christ and have the testimony of the Lamb. Amen. You talk about a great awakening. That's going to be a big one happening right in the middle of the tribulation. Praise God. Right at the beginning of it. Wow. And then after, the, when they caught away, Enoch and Elijah is going to show up and take over. <laughs> you talk about an awakening. Woo, man, you get those two prophets at the same time. Can you imagine being in their meeting? And they're not messing around. you Because I tell you right now, you do anything wrong, fire comes out of their mouth and devours you. <laughs> you talk about beating somebody and ripping out the hair. And that's Nehemiah's ministry. Nehemiah chapter 13, verse 25. I cursed them, beat them, beat some of them, and pulled out their hair and commanded them to vow to God, saying, We will not join ourselves unto the stranger. Ooh, Mahasateri. Kitala Mokate Yaha. Ho, ho, ho. Ho, ho, ho. Ha, 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 ha. I mean, just imagine. Imagine what happens when you get radical about God with what's going on in your life. Where you come to a place in Him where you're not going to allow anything to violate or to defile His temple. I want you to think about it. People, I'm going to tell you right now, the world around us needs to hear this message tonight. They need to understand the moving and the flow of God. I'm just interested in the Word of God becoming a fire in your mouth. And I'm going to tell you right now, there has to be change in your life for that to become a reality. God will take you and use you all over the nations of the earth. He will. But you got to get serious with Him. you got to get serious with Him. And the seriousness begins right in the per your personal life and your conduct and the stuff that you agree with, the stuff you buy into, the stuff that you accommodate, the stuff that you approve that God says, I hate. And you say, hey, I think this is good. It's about time God's people just lay hold on the fire of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. 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 And as, 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 as those who are sold out to God and zealous unto good works, because see, God purified himself of people zealous of good works. And those good works are the works of Christ Jesus. It's the works of the Holy Ghost. It's the works of heaven. It's the works of the kingdom of God. You get yourself a Holy Ghost flamethrower and you burn up everything around you that is contrary to the ways of God. You quit hanging out and carousing with devils and start casting them out instead. Amen. One hand clap. Amen. And that wasn't that radical. Amen. Jesus. You need to get passionate. Yeah. You, you, need, you need to call Maniah, see Padiah. Hallelujah. Tonight, if you want to change, change is here. But if you want to remain the same, you won't be on one miserable puppy all the way through this program. You'll be looking at your watch wondering when you're going to get out of here. Looking for an opening to make a break. It's fine. We're going to keep the fire on the thing, man. We don't want you a bunch of hypocrisy hanging around anyways. Good enough? Got enough hypocrisy hanging around with the fire. Man, what happens if you take the fire out of it? What happens if you take the Word of God out of it? What happens if you take the radical commands of God out of it? My, you got nothing but a mess. But a house of devils. Synagogue of Satan. Huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's true. We're going to lay hold on what Papa 
Listen, here, Father's pleading with you tonight. Think about it. Think about it. Father's pleading with you and inspiring you to say, Lord, open up my eyes. No, 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 no. He's pleading with you in the context of prophecy and the moving of the Spirit. Now, like, you know, you know, after the thing is all said and done, now you want to do it. It's like Israel. God said, move now. Well, I don't think it's a convenient time. I don't I have an ability to discern. Well, if you know what, if you just get submitted and broken before God, follow leadership, you wouldn't even need any ability to discern. Huh? You just grab a hold of somebody who knows and grab a hold of their coattail and don't let go. Just do what they do. You'll get wise inside of two seconds. I mean, come on, give me a break. Huh? You start obeying God's word, doing what God says in his word without compromise. You'll have a wisdom in, inside of a commitment. Amen. People are still trying to sort it out, trying to figure out what they're going to do, trying to mix their word with God's word, their ideas with God's ideas, their concepts with God's concepts, and wonder why it ain't working out because he's not sharing. And as soon as his, his words mix with your word, it's a lie. And you will not profit you. As soon as your, his concepts mix with your concepts, it's nothing but an imag vain imagination. And it ain't going to create nothing in you. It's true. Oh, but what happens when you suddenly begin, begin to believe, wait a minute. I've received the ministry of Jesus Christ Almighty. God is on the inside of me. I have authority over all evil spirits, over all unclean spirits to cast them out. I have authority to tread upon scorpions and serpents and over all the power of the enemy. I've got a wellspring springing on the side of me. I've got a river flowing. I've got the Holy Ghost here giving me a knowing. Hey, I got the teacher right now here guiding me and leading me and developing me. He's showing me how to clean escape from sin. He's not getting all involved. He's not getting all up inside my face beating me and pulling out my hair. He's bringing Holy Ghost conviction and he, and, he, and, he, and he ministers to us and he strengthens us and then he'll, he'll stand and watch what we'll do because he wants us to yield. He wants us to be obedient out of love and relationship. That's the way God does it. We should be obedient out of love and relationship. He's waiting. He's waiting. And then he, so, he sees us at that crossroads of temptation, that crossroads of challenge, that crossroads of self-exaltation rather than self-denial. And we all of a sudden make the right decisions. And he moves in. He said, I got myself somebody to work with. He said, come here. Come here. I'm going to show you a secret. Come here. Let me tell you a secret. That's what he does. He said, come here. Let me show you how to move. Let me show you how to go. And now I interpret it as well. Hmm. Let me show you how to see into the realms of the spirit. Let me show you how to have visions and dreams. Let me show you how to begin to move in these visions and dreams and see them become a reality and nations change and kings and noblemen and princes and, 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 and emperors and presidents and nations touched by the power of God flowing out of you and me. Hallelujah. It is about time that you begin to grab a hold of the real simple stuff in God. I tell you right now, if somebody wants to come around and start teaching you a bunch of things about the word, say, well, let's just wait out. First, hold up, just time out. I just want to see the power. I want to see the power of God moves through your life first. I want to see what, what you know about God's word, what it's produced in your life. See what I'm saying? Just stand back, just stand back, just stand back. Say, we're just going to watch you for a while. We're going to see, we're going to see if these signs follow you that believe. We're going to see if you have power, power and authority over unclean spirits, cast them out. Huh? We're going to see if you move in the authority of Jesus Christ, if you know how to flow with the Holy Ghost. Huh? Hallelujah. That's why Paul said, he said, I hear about you guys out there. You got some great teachers, some really brilliant people. He said, I don't really care nothing about their intellect. I'm going to come see their power. I'm going to see a proof of Christ in them. Huh? Otherwise, they're just nothing but squawking babies in the nursery. Huh? I love them. That's what Paul was saying. I love them. Huh? He said, I, I, he said, I've espoused you as a chaste virgin. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm the one basically, basically lays it out. I'm breastfed you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm looking for some people drawn from the breast. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. Don't need that anymore. Praise God. You can chew food. <laughs> you got teeth. <laughs> ah, you didn't have to beg God for them to come. They just developed because you grew. Hallelujah. You didn't have to pray, oh God, please cause me to be able to have the gift of speech. It just is there. It developed because you matured properly. And I'm talking about the speech of God. Amen. Amen. 
well, I'm going to just sit down for a little while because I'm just talk to you. Not I'm, listen, I'm here. You know, we can go out. We can go minister other places. And, and when we minister in other places, God gives us a special gift and ability to go ahead and do signs and wonders and miracles in different ways. But when we're here at home, here in the church, pastoring, we're, he we're here to help you understand how to do it. Amen. Amen. Kind of move is the church. You can't expect me to sit around, stand around, rather, because I'm not sitting around. There's no such. I don't sit in the meeting. Do you notice I didn't sit the whole meeting? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Everybody sit around and watch a couple of people who, who've matured in the things of the Spirit and flow in the gifts of the Holy Ghost. Huh? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You got to stop that now. You're going to have to learn how to flow right there where you're standing. Right there where you're praising. Right there where you're giving thanksgiving. Huh? Because if you don't know how to thank God, if you don't know how to give thanks and, and, and shout unto God, I don't want you touching me. You listen to me. I don't have to. Come on, man. I have to bear that thing. Listen to me. You listening to me? Yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> Father just wants to produce joy and life in you through relationship, yeah. yes. through communion, a communion that is only possible because you have taken a hold of the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Because you live by the blood. Hallelujah. The blood. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You constantly drink in the blood. Hallelujah. Ah, drink it. Hallelujah. Communion. Poroshatana. I mean, you wake up in the morning and it's what you look like. You get up in the morning. First thing up, man, you already out there. You having communion. Huh? First thing in the morning, mm, praise God, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your precious blood. You all my righteousness. Huh? Right off the bat, this is it. You're just living there all day long. All day long. Thank you, Jesus. For this fellowship. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for this realm of divine power. Thank you, Father, for this realm of divine glory that I live in. Uh, my righteousness, the, my ability to be able to access the Father, to function and flow in the realms of the Spirit, to live in the holies of holies, to be everything that is acceptable unto God. Man, I'm eating the bread of heaven. I'm not eating manna. Bread of heaven. Bread of heaven. Living by the word, Christ Jesus. You talk about fellowship. My goodness gracious. This is how you're supposed to live your life. Huh? Ain't things, anything start happening bad, you just go ahead and just go. Some, some starts harassing you, tormenting you, just grab a hold of the communion cup. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't even think about that stuff no more. I just, I'm back over here with the blood. <laughs> that's washed me, that's cleansed me, that's given me the right of union and fellowship and oneness with the Almighty. You start moving in the realm called heaven. You'll start living in what Enoch lived in, but greater. You'll start living in what Paul lived in. You'll start living in a fellowship that will begin to work out faith in your life. A glory of heaven in your life. Satan come along with his pollution. You don't want any of it. Huh? Oh, zudade keste i parano ombale. Nothing's hidden in the presence of the Lord. Everything's revealed. You walk over here in this place of purity, you're walking over in the bright, shining light where there is no darkness. Mm -hmm. You walk over here in this, in other words, you walk over here in this place of fellowship and communion with God. My, 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 my. Your eyes will be open. You'll be able to see. You live here. You stay here. You think here. You pray here. You walk here. You talk here. You become so sensitive to that which God loves and that which God hates. You'll love what he loves and hate what he hates. You'll be grieved by what the Holy Ghost is grieved by. People want to learn how to flow in the Holy Ghost. And all day long, they grieve in the Holy Spirit. Speak in lies, believe in doubt and unbelief. Come on. It's unbelievable, unimaginable. Living out their own life, anchored to self-interest. Huh? Saying that moving in the kingdom of God... Laboring in the purposes of the Spirit and the anchor to the dock of self-interest. Going nowhere. With a big old smile on their face. Huh? A sense of self-assurance. I'm on my way to heaven. You know, you adopt. 
You may be able to sing. You may be able to... You can't dance like me. You have to... You have to in the spirit of the Lord, you had to get the Holy Ghost to dance like me. Hallelujah. You had to get the Holy Ghost to dance like David. Yep. I, I promise you. The same outworking of the Holy Ghost. It doesn't matter where you, whether you go to the South Pole, North Pole, any pole, the equator, wherever. When God begins to move on people's lives, same response everywhere. He'll just have the same response. Don't tell me that you're some special person don't have that kind of response. No, when the Spirit of the Lord moves upon your heart, you will dance like David danced. Amen. Thanks, thanks, Pastor James McCurdy, for writing a great song. <laughs> Hallelujah. I gave him another verse. A long time ago, I gave him another verse. I said, you need another verse to that song. He said, what is it? I said, when the Spirit of the Lord moves upon my heart, I'll do what David could not do. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Pop is taking it to a whole other realm for us. While we're sitting we're wondering why we can't be something in the past, God's got something far greater for us. Come on, people. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now, Angie. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Taking good notes up here tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I want you to open up your Bibles and talk to you a little bit about the wonderful things of God tonight. How many people here came you here came here? You want to just hear about the wonderful things of God? A few of you, half of you, about 50% responded. Not bad. Not bad. I'm believing for 100%. Amen. How many of you come here tonight you want to hear about the wonderful things of God? Yeah. Yeah. So that, that's praise God. Praise God. Amen. Everybody saved. Raise a hand. Everybody who didn't. No, every, it's already done. It's already done. It's finished. It's just like the trump of the Lord it comes in a moment, twinkling of an eye. You can't say, oh, I'm ready now. Oh, I just, what? Everybody's going, I'm ready now. No, it's done. It's already done. You was ready or not. You were ready to respond or you weren't ready to respond. There's not a second moment in the twinkling of an eye that follows the first moment in the twinkling of an eye. Ready or not. Hallelujah. <laughs> but, I mean, you come to hear the good things of God. Father will do everything that he said he would do, but you're going to have to get rid of your stubbornness. Amen. And that was a special interest to a couple of people that I could see spirit of stubbornness all over them. The hard-headed. Just stubborn. Huh? You know, I'm going to tell you right now, you just learn how to let God, the Holy Ghost, talk to you, correct you by his word, by his spirit. All that is about is you being able now to come into a place where you can yield to him and flow with him and thus be used by him more and do the things that the word of God said for you to do and receive the blessings that Father's already poured out. It's just that you've got this big gigantic self-interest bubble over top of you and every raindrop from heaven's falling off. <laughs> Rolling off. Rolling off. It's worse than water off a duck's back. At least he gets a little evaporative effect from it. The bubble effects, you get nothing. Are you listening to me? The Holy Ghost correct us and instruct us in his ways so that we can begin to move with him. I want to move with the Holy Ghost. I want to learn to move with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> I want to see Father do it. Jesus wants me to live the life of relationship with the father that he himself modeled for us and his eyes were open. God wants us to be the people whose eyes are open, not the people whose eyes are shut. I mean, the people whose eyes are open are the people who are able to see because they don't have mind blinding spirits. They're not have some spiritual blindness. God has given spiritual sight for us. But if we don't take the spiritual sight that he's already given to us and it's already been revealed to us by his word and by his spirit in the experience and fellowship that you have at this point and it result in a consecration, it result in obedience, it results in a separation to the Lord, you're not going to get any more. Because God's not here to, to, you know, to thrill you and, you know, with fantasies. <laughs> God the Holy Ghost is looking for people who are real and genuine. God the Holy Ghost only loves purity and truth. He's not interested in fake and lying. Just give here some sweet little talk from somebody who don't mean a, hardly a word of it. Are you listening? Yes. Huh? Yes. 
God is God of truth. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm telling you right now, there's not a single thing that God won't heal. If you'll listen, if you'll just believe him. So many people, uh, they, they take their a problem, an issue, a sickness, a disease, a sin. They make a pet out of it. They give it all kinds of attention. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Why don't you give God's provision all the attention and say everything else is a lie. God is true. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I tell you right now, one day my body uh, more than likely is going to lay down and die and it's going to be the worms are going to eat it. Yes, the worms. And I'll be terrible. Well, they, ship, they shoot you full, so full of embalming fluid it kills everything. But nonetheless, you'll turn to dust over time. Yes, you will. Yeah. I mean, they pickle you enough to last several hundred years. <laughs> Maybe even more. I don't know how... I don't know. I've not actually been interested in reviewing any studies on how long you, it takes you to decompose after they finish with you, in the, you know, at the funeral home. I'm not so sure that I want any of that, to tell you the truth. You know what I'm saying? Yes. I'm not so necessarily going to be bad for you, but the bottom line of it is I have great confidence that my body, even though it be dead, it shall live again. Come on, people. I mean, if you believe that, you get past anything that's messing with your body right now. Give me a break. You get past any kind of pain, any kind of issue, because you're believing in the same word that said you are already healed, that said you raised up from the dead, that your body's appointed unto life and to the resurrection of the dead. God can't do anything unless you cooperate with him. You got a one thought he has for you. Amen. Many people, I'm, I'm dealt with people, men. You know, I said, I told a person, I said, the Lord's going to heal you right now. And all of a sudden, wait a minute. I don't know that I want to be healed. I'm getting a check for this. <laughs> An SSI check. What do you want? The SSI check, huh? People, you've been around me long enough. You tell, I, if you get near me and you got an SSI check, First thing, you want to get healed in my prayer line that God given me? I tell you to stop taking the SSI check first and then be healed second. Hallelujah. We don't want nothing compromised in this situation. Oh, no, 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 no. People don't want to be sorted out. They don't want to be sorted out. They just want God to come, give them a quick whatever they need, and then they go on about their merry business. I was with a person the other night, and they have eaten up with cancer and... and, and and, you know, we, that's what we preach. We just preach, wait, watch what God moves. Whole time, resisting the word, stubborn, give me all fish eye, and then walked around, disturbed a couple of things, and then wanted to come up to the, for the prayer line to get healed. I was like, you got to be kidding me, man. You so resistant to everything about God. You so manifest to be demonized. What would you do with your healing other than defy and mock God? Somebody said, can you talk to people like that? Yes. I, I can because I do. And I did. And everybody's standing around like. And this one guy comes up and starts patting him on the back. The Lord really loves you. He really loves you. You're trying to console him from the back. He loves you. No, like, yeah, man, I'm telling you right now. What are you going to do with your healing? Amen. What is it you're going to do with your healing? What is you going to do as a miracle? What is it you're going to do with the dream? What is it that you're going to do with the vision? What is it you're going to do with the revelation? What is it that you're going to do with the encounter with God? It's, what, it's based upon what you're doing right now with the revelation already revealed. And I'm ready to the faith that's already revealed. Because I'm telling you right now, little being given, little is required. That, most of that's attention seeking. That's what it is. Most of that on the back row is attention seeking. It isn't even, it isn't, I don't care what doctor diagnosed, whatever. Doctors aren't that smart anyways. A whole lot smarter than doctors. I have the discerning of spirits. Amen. And I know how that stuff can get cured real quick. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Where's Lydia? Where's Lydia at? There she is. Lydia was a baby, had terrible, terrible seizures. Huh? Had terrible seizures. The bottom line of it is the power and the anointing of God was present and the parents were willing to submit to the church of the Lord Jesus Christ and she was totally healed. The son that people can't, but don't believe you can get healed of. 
Never had one since. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. I mean, she had a couple after we prayed for her, but you know what? Well, we just we punched it again. I smashed that thing right now. Smashed that thing. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I've got, I've got to smash you psalm. I won't, I won't do it tonight. I won't do it tonight. But li really, there's a, one of the psalms is you can translate the words smash. Every time Father's dealing with everything that belongs to sickness and disease and the things that the enemy of your soul, the enemy of his kingdom is doing. Come on, people. Come on, people. You can't diddle daddy around, play games with God. He's not a patty cake God. He's not an idol to laugh at. Huh? He's not an idol to come and offer your little food offerings to. Huh? He's not an, he's not an idol that somehow you've got to appease through some kind of acts of religion. He's the living God who loves us so much that he gave his only begotten son for us. But he is only going to respond to truth in the inward parts and in the hidden parts. He should make you to know wisdom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bothers. Listen, everything he's given, he's given it freely. Yeah. Amen. Freely. If God spared not his own son, but offered him up for the sins of us all, yeah. how shall he not also by him freely give us all things? Not send things freely. Freely, freely, you have received, freely give. He gives freely. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He causes all grace to abound unto us that we have all sufficiency in all things, but there is an obedience that has to be there. Amen. All people want is Sunday morning service. And then that is rated... Based, that is rated, listen, all that, that is rated on whether or not it was a good meeting. And if it was a good meeting Sunday morning, that's it, that's all. And we'll be back next Sunday morning to do the same thing again. That is nothing but falsehood and vanity. It's nothing but falsehood and vanity. It's nothing but religion. That's never, there's no relationship there. There's no moving forward with God there. There's no pressing in there. There's no hunger there. There's no passion there. There's no thirsting there. There's no real seeking God there. It's religion. So Sunday morning service, and we'll be back here next Sunday morning. We'll all raise our hands and we'll worship, and it won't be very deep either. Because me, most people's de definition of good meeting is like, <laughs> give me a break. Huh? It's like trying to take a shower when it's sprinkling. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Huh? Going out in a little sprinkle, you know, a little Southern California rainstorm, which is nothing but a, like a, you know, a 10 second sprinkle. You know what I'm saying? It's got to be a flash flood. It was a 10 second sprinkle. Your front windshield barely got wet, right? Trying to take a shower in that. Give me a break. You can't take a shower in that. You can't even get soaked up. <laughs> you can't even get the soap. No, you can't even get the wet soap. You can't even get the soap wet. <laughs> Man, I tell you right now. Hallelujah. I like to take a real shower. Yeah. I like lots of water pressure. I like 50 PSI. <laughs> <laughs> I like it hot. I like it, it peels your skin off. Steams up the room, man. I like to get the job done properly. Hallelujah. Yeah. I do. I mean, I like it the same way in the things of the Spirit. I want there a flow of the heaven. I want a move of God. I want something happening in my soul. I want some emotion. Yeah. <laughs> I want some Holy Ghost emotion. I want some genuine truth. I want to feel the presence of a living God. I want to be touched by Him, moved by Him, strengthened by Him, filled by Him, overwhelmed by Him. I want a living God. I want a God that's got eyes that can see, hands that can touch, feet that can walk, a mouth that can speak. Not some little lifeless dead idol. Come on, people. And rarely anywhere on the planet is there even a move of God. Rarely. There's a big, giant difference between a good meeting and a move of God. I'm hungry for a move of God. I'm hungry for a mighty move of God. I'm hungry for that, that working of the power of God, of signs and wonders. When God is moving by His Spirit, there's signs and wonders in all of the earth. There's the display of the ministry of Jesus Christ, the authority of heaven revealed. Yes, Lord. He just want to have song service. 
a bunch of people come up. Their, their success story is a bunch of people came up and responded to a, an altar call and never came back. I don't know what would be more frustrating. Having an altar call where nobody responded or having an altar call where you had the place full no one came, came returned. Huh? Give me a break. Are you listening to me? I was involved in a church back in the early, back in the early 80s, back in 1980 here in, in other churches, big group of churches. I'm not going to tell you about the, what church, the denomination. It was a, it's a denomination that says they're not a denomination. <laughs> it's funny stuff. But every week, it was a thousand people in the altar. But the church never grew more than 14, 1,500 people. But every week, there was a thousand people in the altar. That math doesn't work. That's called funny math. Every week, a thousand, almost a thousand people got saved on average every week. But the church remained around 1,400, 1,500 people. So what's up with that? A thousand people didn't get saved every week. The ones that came back, they got saved. Now, what do you do? You count the ones that came back? No, you're not going to do that because that's going to look bad. They don't look bad. We don't got good statistics to report. Are you listening to me? Because where's the move of God? Where's the move of God? That takes pressing in. I learned from the men of old, that's every night, sometimes 14, 16, 18 weeks. Where people come to the meeting every night, 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 night in, day, day in, day out. Night. We're, gonna get, we're getting ready to go to Aberdeen, flying out 5 o'clock in the morning, two meetings a day. In the morning meeting, evening meeting, morning meeting, evening meeting kind of thing, you know. I think they're actually going to do morning meeting, evening meeting. They're going to take a break, then evening meeting, then morning meeting, evening meeting, take a break, then evening meeting, then morning meeting, evening meeting. Because people come in from different places and, you know, they've not, they're using their vacation time from their work. And they want to just give people opportunity to go out and see something around that area. That's fine. It's wonderful. But I mean, literally, where people would come back in the times where you read about signs and wonders and miracles and demonstration of the power of God, people come to meetings 14, 16, 18, 20 weeks. That was common. And there'd be so many in the meeting. And, the, and, and the, the, you know, first night, people getting healed, signs and wonders. But there'd be people that would wait 14, 16, 18 weeks. And then right there at the last part, suddenly, the power of God come upon them and they get healed too. But look at the commitment and the consecration that says, look, I know where, I know that there's a fountain here, a provision from God for me. I know that he freely gives me all things. I'm going to press in until the wall breaks. Right. You put a press on something long enough and it's going to change. Yes. I promise you, if I stood right here and I put a press on this wall like this right here, okay, for a, a week, there'd be a dent in that wall. Are you listening to me? Yes. And I guarantee you, I'll make sure it wouldn't be a week because it's flexing on me now. <laughs> I guarantee you, if I just put a pressure on that, a couple of days, I just didn't move. Right there. 48 hours. Just pressing it. It'll, it'll turn it into be a dent. It might even be a hole. You put press on something, anywhere in the realms of the natural, it's going to break. It's going to change. God's called you and I to put a press on. Hallelujah. To lay hold on, to put a press on, yes. to lay hold. Yes. When you talk about laying hold on eternal life, it's a death grip. Uh, put it better like this. It's a life grip. You, get, you, yes. can, you cannot let go. If you do, you're dead. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> some of the people in here have been in some threatening situations. You know, some of you barely get out of your living room. But others of you actually been out there <laughs> dangling on the edge. And you know what it means, that if you let go, if you let go, you're dead. If you slip up, you're dead. Huh? Yes. Putting a life, laying hold, a life grip. I know in whom I believe. I know that God cannot lie. I know that this provision is mine. I know that this provision is here. I will not stop until I've laid hold on that which God has commanded. I will press in. I'll be in every place. I'll be in every meeting. Uh, Evan Roberts asks his pastor, he says, what do I have to do in order to have that same move of God that was in the generations before me? That, that it seemed like every 30 to 40 years in Wales, a great sweeping revival would, would take over the nation and touch the whole of the UK. His pastor said, you need to be in every meeting. You need to seek God with all your heart every day. 
You cry out to God. You passionately pursue Him. And then, at least, you will be in a position to receive what it is He does. Whether He, he will do it or not, their doctrine was, we don't know. But look at what God will do with even people who don't know. They don't know, but they're showing up and pressing in and going after it like they do know. Whoa, my, 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 my. I'm telling you right now, action shows faith and demonstrates faith rather than a, a supp supposed faith that sits around and does nothing, believing for a day. Huh? It shows, it's proven to us over and over again. Those who had far less than what we had have right now, but yet did so much more with it. Oh, my, 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 my. Oh, my, 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 my. I pray in the name of yes. Jesus Christ, not a single one of you are able to even yes. recognize me in the next eight years, yes. spiritually. Yes. And I pray I'm barely able to recognize yes. you. Yes. And if I find you anywhere on the planet, yes. you're not sitting around cogitating anymore. Yes. Wondering what God might do someday. But you're doing the work. Yes. Signs and wonders and miracles yes. breaking out. Because you're just going to do it. Yes. You're going to lay hands you lay hands on the sick. You know who people, you know the people that get others healed and move in the power of God? It's the people that do it. Amen. 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 Thank you, I've never seen anybody in ministry lay hands on the sick and not have a move of God. They continually have an altar call and lay hands on the sick. They're going to always have a move of God. The people who don't do that, they're waiting for another day. They don't believe they can do that or whatever it is going on in their head. They don't have anything. I'll tell you right now, I'm, I'm busting you out of your place. Huh? I'm, some of you like a, like a, a, a person in a, in, a, in a gold mine has been a cave in. <laughs> We're digging you out right now. Hallelujah. So, <laughs> so you can come out of that place with great substance in Jesus' name. <laughs> we believe there's something in there with you. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> that mine shaft had a breakdown because there's a mother load of gold in there. Hallelujah. <laughs> 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 the father load, better said. Amen. Yeah. A great things in God. Father's purpose, great things for our lives. <laughs> Papa God, somebody said, well, so-and-so prophesied over me. And I don't know. Listen, God prophesied over you. God. <laughs> the Almighty, the Sovereign One, the one that nothing can resist His will, done prophesied over you. He prophesied greatness over you, Lydia. He prophesied greatness over you. He prophesied greatness. Prophesy smallness, mediocre. Well, you're still going to be in the number, but you're not going to do much. He prophesy any of that over us. Yeah. Whew, he ordained us into yes. his life, yes. into his glory. Yes. His glory. Yes. He gave us his power to function in his glory and in his purity. Yes. Hallelujah. I'm taking hold of that. That's right. All you got to do is say amen. I'm taking hold of that. That's mine. That's mine. I'm having that. That's mine. I'll take that too. I want that. I want that. I want that. That, 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 everything. I want that. Any part of the anointing, I want that too. But I want more of it. I want that, but more. That's Elisha. What do you want? I want that, but more. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I was wondering what would happen if he would have asked for triple. Well, I, mean, I want that, but unlimited. Because he, he said double, and he got two of everything. Yes. Two, two rays, rays from the dead, you know, you know, two visions more. I mean, double the visions, double the resurrections, double the healing, double the miracles, double the signs, double the wonders. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> double the effectiveness. Oh, God, I want more support. I'm, I'm just, I just, just, I want you to just follow me. I want, God, the Holy Ghost put this, put something on the side of me. It's so intense. It's so radical. I'm going to try to fall asleep, and I'm going to get this crying of the Spirit going out of me. Oh, God, use me. Oh, God, use me. Oh, God, use me. Oh, God, I'm so desperate for you to use me. Oh, God, I want your signs. I want your wonders. I want your glory. I want your power. I want all the things that belong to heaven now revealed in my life. Oh, God, do whatever you got to do. Father, whatever adjustments need to be made in my life, whatever changes need to come. Oh, God, I don't care about nothing except you. Yes, yes, yes. 
This, yes. God prepares a heart yes. to receive from him. Because yes. he's not going to come with a whole, your whole menu of your other interests. Because right. right. he will not allow... He will not allow you to have a bunch of gods alongside of him. Amen. Tonight, I've got some good news for you. We're here to break the curse off of you. So I said, well, which doctor over there in D1, he cursed me. No worries. I tell you right now, I got more power in my little fingernail. I got more power in a, in a little drop of spit coming out of my mouth than any witch doctor in Tijuana. <laughs> more power to bless you. <laughs> Hallelujah. People are always worried about the curse and whether the, God's, in the, God's not in the curses. Papa's in the blessing. He specializes in things thought impossible. He'll do for you what no other power could do. I said God specializes in things thought impossible. Papa, God will do for you. Woo! I feel faith. I feel faith. I look on your faces and I can feel faith. I love feeling faith. See, faith is something you hook up with. Because I'm telling you right now, if I look at people's faces and there's not a response of faith, I'm, I get stirred with anger. I get just the opposite. I smash you. And I'm talking not about a human being, but a demon spirit of doubt and unbelief. His Father's made us a blessing to the earth. Hallelujah. Not a curse. Sin's a curse to the earth. We are a blessing to the earth. Hallelujah. Oh, we the healing ointment. <laughs> We're the balm. Hallelujah. To the nations. You got yourself a wound? Yeah, put some balm on it. It'll be healed right up. <laughs> Hallelujah. I used to, when I was a young guy, went around to different places surfing and whatnot, and I'd have this special little balm I had, man, if anybody got hit by a jellyfish, I had this balm, put it on them. I didn't care what, man of war, didn't matter. Immediately just drew out all the sting and all the poison, huh? I got a balm, I got a curing. <laughs> so my little kid, one time I was down in South Sepuelas and no I, was, no, I was down in Mazatlan and suddenly a little kid got hit by, got wrapped around by a big old jellyfish and he just screamed his head off. I had my little special little bomb went over there, rubbed it on him immediately. He's got a smile on his face, but pain's all gone away, huh? We got a special bomb here tonight. Huh? It will make you turn your sadness into gladness. <laughs> we'll turn your sorrow into rejoicing. Huh? We'll turn your darkness into, your, into light, your night into day. Yes. God specializes in things that are impossible. Hallelujah. He did for you what no power could do. No power of man, no power of medicine, no power of government. Huh? No power of human flesh. Stinky, smelly. Put some more cologne on it, human flesh. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Uh, blessed is a man who trusts in God alone. Hallelujah. Who trusts in God alone. Praise God that there's a people that Father's developing in the earth that it don't matter what goes down. They're still believing God. Everybody on the planet can be saying, nay, it's not so. But because it's there in the Word of God, they're saying, no, it is so. And I'm not going to move. I'm not going to be common. I'm not going to be ordinary. I'm not going to be moved with the, the, the masses of popular opinion. I'm going to be rare. Because <laughs> that's what God made us. We say precious or peculiar, it's rare. Rare, rare treasure. Don't go giving your wife or your, or your fiance some fake jewel for a, huh? Huh? What do they call those fake diamonds? What are those? That's so, yeah, the zirconium or whatever it is. Huh? Huh? in some, some artificial colored glass and say it's an emerald. <laughs> no, no, no. No. The special is in the quality of the rareness of it. The peculiar, the, <laughs> the treasure is in the rareness of it. God made you and me rare. Special treasure, his special treasure. He made you and me not waiting, crying out, oh God, do it. Priests and kings, heirs and co-inheritors. He's made us a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a rare treasure. He's already ours. We don't have to wait for some day in the future. 
We're always waiting for something in the future. It's time to lay hold of them at night right now. Say it's mine. Say it's mine. It's mine. It's mine. I take it now. It's mine. Suddenly you begin to be you begin to be built up in confidence and boldness. And in, in the realms of confidence and boldness, suddenly faith and authority begins to work in the realms of boldness and confidence. Then circumstances and Satan, things are of just of just natural occurrences in this world begin to take place to try to threaten you and try to beat you down, try to chop you down to size, try to you know, pull you back down into the bucket. Are you with me? Most Hispanics know that one. <laughs> Try to put you back in your place. <laughs> Jesus. Some people, I've received a place. It's a heavenly one. I've received the glory and an honor and authority. No man endowed me with it. God gave it to me. And no man can take it away. Man didn't give it and man can't take it away. Satan didn't give it and Satan can't take it away. God give it. Hallelujah. And he's not taking it away. Amen. So long as I'm interested in it, so long as I want it, praise God, these things are mine. I have a peace that the world can, cannot threaten. I have a joy that the world cannot threaten. I have a love that the world cannot threaten. I've got a faith that the world cannot threaten. I've got a confidence. I've got a boldness. I've got an assurance. I've got an assurance. I have myself an assurance. Hallelujah. Mm. <laughs> I'm holy. I'm holy. Holy and acceptable. Uh, I got strength. I, I don't have manna to eat. I have the living bread. I have the bread of life. <laughs> I got enough strength to deal with anything. Now, what was you saying, devil? Come over here. <laughs> Hallelujah. I really feel like preaching the smash you sermon tonight. But I'm going to I'm leave that one. That's advertisement coming up. <laughs> you lay a hold of everything in God that is freely given, and you take that authority, and anything that rises up against you that is not of Him, you destroy it. You smash it. You break off the yokes. Hallelujah. Anytime you don't feel worthy or something's threatening, you just say, thank you, Lord Jesus. I'm washed. <laughs> I'm washed. I'm washed. I'm washed. My fellowship's so sweet. The Lord gave that all to me. His precious blood, my communion, my fellowship, <laughs> my oneness, my acceptance, my ability to stand in the holies of holies where no one could stand before. Where no one could stand before and gaze at the glory. No one. Not even the holy seraphim angels. They had to cover their face. And I can behold him face to face with an unveiled face. Hallelujah. Mm -mm -mm. With, a, with a confidence that we, we, we will see him as he is. For we shall be as he is. Hallelujah. We shall be like him. Hallelujah. In his glory. You know. Not as an eternal authority and eternal power. Not in who he is as God. We'll always be bowing before him and praise God for it. Hallelujah. He'll always be God and we'll always be servants. Uh, he'll always be the redeemer and we'll always be the redeemed. He'll always be the master and we'll always be the slave. Uh, but he's made himself our servant. Oh, and offered himself a ransom for us. Uh, and said to our enemy, take me instead of them. Take me in their place and let them go free. Oh, my, 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 my. I say that for Kashmir tonight. I say that for Cuba tonight. Take me and let the nation go free. I pray the Lord lay, I pray that you let God lay nations upon your heart, lay vision upon your heart. So much so that it drives you to a place of prayer where people could just understand the results of fellowship and communion with God. If you could just learn the lesson of the 82 year old and 84 year old woman, people walking around so high on their self, so stuffed up in their own thinking that all they can see is the fleshly sensual realm that belongs to their own performance based ideas of themselves. Rather than stepping over into a heavenly realm and recognizing like the 82 year old and 84 year old woman, I could be shut in here with no, nobody being able to see me, nobody being able to hear me. And, and I can lock into a heavenly realm, a realm of the spirit, and I can begin to change things in the whole of the nation. Just little old me, 84 year old woman, can barely even move around. 
She talked a lot, but to God. Amazing. Amazing, huh? Whew. Open your Bibles to Psalms chapter 46. Hallelujah. Can I have your Bible? Psalms 46. You there? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Verse 10. <laughs> I mean, this, is a mighty, this is a mighty psalm to begin with. You know, you, you can get just caught up anywhere along here. <laughs> Listen to this. I'm going to go ahead and back up. Huh? God's my refuge. He's my strength. He's my very present help in time of trouble. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know. They would just think about, well, they fair weather friends. You know, you have friends as long as everything's going good and you're doing good and you, you being ha behaving and whatnot. Hey, real friends there in time of trouble. Here he is, my very present God. My present, my, God is my refuge, my strength, my very present help in time of trouble. Amen. Therefore, will I not, not fear. Yeah. Therefore, I will not fear. Come on, my must say, Now, let's really swing the pendulum here for a minute. Get out of your little whatever it is you're afraid of. Huh? Little spook in the night. Huh? Somebody said, if you're feeling all alone, put on dim the lights, put on a horror movie. Right? Right. It's amazing. Because all of a sudden people think something's around them. Are you with me? You catch it now. You got it. You got it. You're feeling all alone. Right? You're feeling all alone. Because people got more faith on the negative side. And as soon as something starts ministering to you, you're going to have a response. Especially on that side of things, on the fear side of things. You're right. If you're feeling all alone, dim the lights, put a horror movie on. Suddenly, you don't feel alone anymore. Why? The mystery of fear makes you believe that the, that the ghosties are floating around. That there's some kind of spooky guy about to get you. All right? You're not alone anymore. Are you with me? Are you getting it? I just love you a little slow. I feel you like, you know, you're thinking, wow, we just really regressed. No, we're not. I'm right on you right now. Because people always got imaginations going on that there's things there that are not there. Because you're listening to the wrong ministry. You're hearing the wrong thing. So I want to swing, swing the pendulum a little bit now that I got your attention. Because <laughs> everybody's all excited. Yeah, praise God, we're not afraid, though. Though the earth should be removed out of this place. We're standing here strong and confident. And some little financial issue comes, takes you out. Come on. Are you listening to me? Some little threat from some little nobody comes along, takes you out. You're afraid out of your mind. Huh, are you listening to me? Yes. Well, let's get over here into fellowship. Let's go. Oh, Ramama. Say Terina Mahalataya. How you get the flu and think you're dying of cancer. Are you listening to me? <laughs> Are you listening to me? Go over here. Malasikaramasha. Can you hear me? <laughs> get a headache, think you got a brain tumor. Huh? Get a little dizzy, think you're having a stroke. Come on now. I'm talking to you. I want to get in your space tonight. I want you to understand how to arise and let God show forth His mighty power to the midst of your life. It's only going to be possible because you're not going to be threatened by all the lies that are thrown at you. You're going to make God your refuge. Hallelujah. Therefore, I will not fear. Though the earth be removed. I can see some of you right now at an earthquake starting. <laughs> Man, when you go under his hand, when you're under his protection, you're going nowhere till he decides so. <laughs> you're good. You're good. You're good. The lightning was going off the other day and somebody was with me and been in lightning storms, worked fire storms. And this is the kind of weather where the, 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 the terrible lightning storms create fires. I said, good thing we know the one who's in charge of the lightning, huh? Keep on working. <laughs> Hallelujah. Huh? I said, I'm not going anywhere till Papa decides so. I'm in his hands. Oh, isn't that a wonderful place to be? Huh? All men would be equally brave if everybody believed such a thing. Hallelujah. Huh? There would be no fear. When all of a sudden, 
it, you're not just a victim of circumstance and random event, but you are under the protective, watchful eye of Almighty God and nothing can touch you unless he says so. Nothing can harm you. Nothing can affect you. This is time the Lord gives permission. Woo! Hallelujah. I want you to come into this fellowship. I want you to come into this faith. I want you to come into this confidence. I want you to come into this relationship. Seth, the Lord God, most high, the Lord of armies. Hallelujah. Just come on in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody said, I thought we were supposed to do that together. We are. I'm just drinking on your behalf. <laughs> I'm drinking on people's behalf all the time. I'm getting drunk in the Holy Ghost while everybody watching me and modeling it, saying, hey, this is what it feels like, this is what it looks like. Well, you know, this is what it looks like. You're going to have to experience what it feels like. I should not fear that the earth be moved out of its place. Whew. Hallelujah. Though the mountains be carried in the midst of the sea. You're standing right here right now watching, you know, Ramona moving. You're watching uh, the San Bernardino Mountains moving. Right over into the ocean. Everything's shaking up. I mean, everything's falling off right left. You got yourself a wedge of land standing there going, praise God. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> I'm not afraid. <laughs> I'm, I'm in the place in this glorious relationship, the shelter of the Almighty, a relationship with Him. He who controls all things controls me too. Yeah. Oh, come on over into this fellowship tonight. He who controls all things controls me too. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swellings thereof. Look at it. <laughs> because there is a river. <laughs> there is a flow of the Holy Ghost. Look, there is a move of God. You may lay hold on a move of God tonight, tomorrow. You can press into a realm of a move of God. Amen. I get to go preach all this week in a move because I'm moving in a move of God. Amen. Things will change because I'm in a move of God. Amen. And I'm not willing to be outside of a move of God. Amen. I'm going to have tongues and interpretation of tongues. I'm going to have prophecy. I'm going to have revelation. I'm going to have knowledge. I'm going to come to dreams and vision. I'm going to blow in miracles and gifts of workings, the gifts of the Holy Ghost and the workings of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Why? I'm, I'm in a move of God. I got a fellowship. I got a relationship. I got a confidence. I got a boldness. I got an assurance in my fellowship over here. It's something that's already done. I'm not waiting for a future Jesus to come and die at Calvary's crawl. He already came for me and finished the work. Hallelujah. Woo! I'm not waiting for the Holy Ghost to be poured out on the day of Pentecost. It happened 2,000 years ago when he's never going to leave and he's available for anybody who ever asked. He's available for anybody who raises hold, presses in, touches it, makes a demand, decrees what he decrees. Amen. People believe in all the wrong things. You listen to the wrong ministry. And suddenly you begin to respond to that ministry just like the horror movie. Suddenly you begin to have other things present. You become sensitive to other things that are there. There's no question about it. People start listening to the ministry that comes right out of the demonic realm, out of fear, and all of a sudden they begin to be sensitive, and especially in a world system that we're in, they begin to be sensitive to, huh, to unholy things. I just pray in the name of Jesus, you understand, first of all, if anybody in here watches horror movies, you're stupid. <laughs> because now you're supposed to be giving yourself to developing in faith, and now you're giving yourself to something that will produce the opposite. Huh? Fear is the opposite of faith. <laughs> Amazing. So you're delivered tonight. You're delivered. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Set free by the word of God. There is a river, the streams thereof. Make glad the city of God, the holy place, the tabernacles of the Most High. That's you and me. Huh? I mean, everything's melting and dissolving around you. You and I, the tabernacle of the Most High, the eternal is living in me. The eternal God. Not, not some eternal myth. The eternal living God. 
He's living, dwelling in me. He's occupied. He surrounds me. God the Father, God the Holy Spirit, Amen. and God the Lord Jesus Christ have joined hands and they're surrounding me right now. And they're teaching me how to walk in their way. Say, we can do this. Let's do this. Teaching us, teaching us how to move in eternal things and unseen things and the things that are most valuable to the Father's heart. I promise you, Father is not interested in the Olympics right now. I promise you. First of all, it was created in the worship and to honor Zeus, Venus, the mother, of he, the, the, the mother of harlots, the queen of heaven. And nothing's changed. Because how can it be different? How, did, how did, where did it get saved? Where did it get saved? Where did it get saved? I know they got clothes on now, but where did they get saved? It's the same demon with the dress. It's the same demon with the shorts. It's the same demon with the bathing suit that's barely above being dressed. Or naked, rather. Oh, I'm going to mess with your program. I'm going to work on you to where you, you just don't have any more fellowship with the world. Who's he, who, who really cares? Why would it be? Why are you sitting there? Oh, who's going to win the race? Who's going to win the race? Who cares? What difference does it make in your life? Really, what value is it to consume your time? Who makes it down the mountain first? Please think about it. Who takes a stick and jumps the highest with a stick? Think about it. What? Give me a break. There's something more valuable for you to be doing with your time and with your life than who can take a metal object and throw it the furthest. That's my team. America. We kill 50 million babies every year. No, not every year. We kill 50 million babies. And now, you know, millions of babies. And probably a year now. And we're winning. We're great. Who wants to support a system that wants to kill 50 million, has killed 50 million babies. And now are, 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 they're ramping up. Because now they want to harvest more organs. They're ramping up. They're ramping up. They're ramping up. I can change that. You can change that. God's given us the power to change that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's not a sick. Listen to me. Everyone listen to me in this place. There's not a sickness. There's not a disease. There's not an affliction. There's not a torment. There's not an effect of a demon power that God himself is not passionately trembling with anticipation to deliver people from every one of those things. He hates sickness. Death, he hates sickness, he hates disease, he hates sin. He wants to deliver you from it. There's a place where you begin to fellowship with him and you become convinced of it. Much of the time in the United States of America, I find myself having to break down the strongholds that people have built up in the minds of those who are afflicted and tormented and in bondage to sickness and in bondage to sin because there are people around them somehow told them that somehow this is what God has willed for their life. And I got to spend a whole bunch of time trying to bust down a lie, a doubt, an unbelief, an imprisonment that people have developed somehow believing that God is somehow a partner in on the job of their affliction, of their torment, of their sickness, of their disease. He's the healer. He's the deliverer. He's the one who loves us. He's the one who died to deliver us from everything that would torment us. He's come to destroy every power of darkness and every work of the devil. And I'm telling you right now, I'm here tonight to destroy every work of the devil. Because I'm here to participate in the ministry of Jesus. Hallelujah. We'll lay hands on you and we'll pray for you. 
And you need to just keep pressing in because I promise you, you press in and I, I promise you, I guarantee you that thing will be broken. Amen. Amen. And Papa's going to demand things. He's going to demand change. Yes. Amen. He's going to demand change. Yes. Amen. He'd demand the person who's on the bed of affliction, he'd demand them to get up. That's change. Yes. Yes. Right. He's going to demand change of everybody. Amen. Hallelujah. God is in the midst of her and she should not be moved. Amen. God shall help her and that right early. And literally, God is talking, here he's just referring to the soul of man. Because when he uses the her, he's not, just, he's not talking just about a city. He's not talking about just a tabernacle in Jerusalem. He's talking about you and me. He's made, he's made his tabernacle in our spirit. He's made his tabernacle in our soul. He's made his tabernacle in our body. Our body is temple. Moves, moves, moves through my hands, touches through my hands, walks through my feet. Hallelujah. 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 He's there. He's there with me. I can boldly say, people think you're, you're wild. You're arrogant. You, you're talking boastfully. I can say, I get to land in Cuba and say, did you feel the earth tremble? <laughs> Why? No, I didn't. Well, it did. Why? Because my foot just touched the soil. Amen. My foot just touched the soil. I know it's a platform on the airport, but that platform is connected to a beam that goes down to the ground, and it felt the vibration of my presence all the way to the ground. I carry the anointing in the presence of Almighty God. If you don't believe that about yourself, that's not who you are. You've not yet been convinced of the great, great works that God has freely done, that God has freely... Yes. That God is freely given in Christ Jesus. Oh, I tell you, start believing this stuff about yourself. Start understanding who God's called you to be and prophesied the greatness that he has prophesied over you. My, 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 my. You won't have time for all those dead works. You won't have time for all those other demon activities. You won't have time for all those thoughts of, of condemnation, doubt, and unbelief. Hallelujah. You won't feel left out no more. Hallelujah. I'm, People are own people that are left out are the people who, just, who, who purpose to be left out. They just all are just sulking over there. They're not left out. They're just over there feeling left out. Huh? And the only people that said this is kind of like this. They, they say the only, the only, you know, people that are bored are the ones that are boring. Are you with me? The only people that are left out is they've excluded themselves. I don't know what they expected in the deal, but just jump on in over here and fellowship. Amen. Just jump over here and be a part of the team. Why'd you even show up? Why'd you show up to the party? You're going to sit out on the front porch acting like nobody wants you inside. Why'd you just stay home? That's weird. Are you with me? Come on. Come on, people. Amen. The heathen raged and the kingdoms were moved. He uttered the voice, his voice and the earth melted. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody's all worried. Somebody's all concerned. Huh? Give me a break. I'm telling you right now, Papa's about to gird his sword upon his side. All he's got to do is sneeze. All he's got to do is utter his voice to say, now. All Papa's doing is looking for people to cooperate with him who will come and begin to learn how to function and walk in ranks. And walk in orders. And walk in divine order. Walk in divine principle. Obey His voice. And be tried. That no matter what comes out their direction. No matter what takes place in their life. They're not budging. They're not moving. They're going straight forward in what God has ordered. That's the people. Over whom the Lord will utter His voice. <laughs> he uttered His voice and the earth melted. He uttered his voice over his armies. The Lord uttered his voice. Before his armies. He said, rush on the city. Climb up the walls. Great is the people who carry out his word. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Don't think that you're waiting on God. You're seeking Him. He's developing you and preparing you to move in Him to the greatness that He's ordained, that He's already freely given. No sacrifice needs to be paid that has already been paid. No work needs to be done that's already been done. Now Father is looking for you and I to respond fully to Him. He has the right to examine it. He has a right to develop it. He has a right to prepare it. He has a strategy behind it all. And I'm going to be ready when the next great moving of God begins to take place, begins to shake the earth, begins to shake the nation begin to shake the nations of the earth he will utter his voice he will utter his voice I had a moving outpouring of the Holy Ghost in the 80s that everybody said was from Hades <laughs> we were flowing right there I didn't know 80s from Hades I was in the heavenlies hallelujah 80s from heaven to be to be prepared at the movings of the living God so that when the Lord begin to utter his voice, when he begin to shake things, when he begin to set things in order, when Carlos Anaconda and, and Rodney Howard Brown and, and um, John Arnott and um, just so many different people and different waves of it, different people that God began to use in special, unique ways, different ministries that God began to use in very unique ways to be right there in a part of it. Be right there in the flow of it. Be right there in the move of it. Be right as excited with it as, as though, you know, you don't have to be a central figure. You're just happy to be moving with it. Moving with whatever God is doing. I watch people move with what God is doing and actually develop more and get prepared more out of it than those people who are actually sometimes being used in, and being right there in the middle of it, as it were. He was, God's looking for some folks who are going to go all the way with him. Because he's not stopping along the way. He's preparing us for yet something greater. Yeah. Yeah. He's called you to greatness. Yeah. It's a place, you've got to come to this place of fellowship and intimacy with it, to be with him, to prepare. prepare. You're going to have to understand how to detach yourself from the interests of worldly things because it will be a claw in you that will keep you from hiding away in the shelter of the yes. Lord and yes. the realms of his glory. Hallelujah. 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 Rest and quietness and confidence. Amen, Jesus' name. Amen. Stress and anxiety and tension. That stuff has got to cease. That's, part, that's a realm of fear. It's a realm of fear. That stuff would drive you completely mad. Drive you to Prozac. <laughs> How are you listening to me? Fear. The effects of fear. The arm of flesh. There's a curse on it. There's a curse on it. It's a choice of men. Cursed are those who trust in the arm of flesh. Blessed are those who make God the sole object of their trust. Say, I, listen, I'm, listen, I'm going to let God do this thing. I'm going to let God do this thing. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. And you know, I tell you, my wife is sitting over here looking at me. Because she knows... If it ain't getting done, I'm going to push it. I'm, I'm going to push it. If it doesn't look like it's happening fast enough, I'm all over the thing, man. I'm not going to sit by it. And the Lord says, no, 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 son. He's teaching me. You prophesy to it. Prophesy to it. Right now, I'm believing God raise up five people to be able to sp uh, support what we're doing and building the new church in Oregon to be able to support it $2,000 a month. Somebody goes, oh, well, you bought a house. How much does that cost you a month? His father's house. This is the work of the kingdom. Yeah. Amen. Uh, you know, I'm looking for people who got to move upon God's, the Lord let them move upon their hearts to where all of a sudden they'll go in debt for the kingdom of God. They have to go to work to pay God's bills. I'm telling you right now, you'll be stretching it out now. You'll be moving in another direction now. It won't be all about self-interest. Go, so go look at your debt. Let's itemize your debt. I had and itemizing a, a, a debt the other day. I said, how much of it's God and how much of it's us? How much of it was spent on the Lord and how much of it was spent on us? Well, if you itemize your debt, what does that look like? Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Car, clothes, house, vacation. Where, 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 huh? All right, can I, am I getting to you? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're we, we, we building a church right now. 
that we're going to be doing camp meetings in. We're going to be doing pastors conferences. Pastors coming from all over the United States to that place. Amen. People can come all over from all over the world to that place. We're not only, it's not only a place, we've got lots and lots of room, praise God. But, you know, everything, there's provision for, for, for people who don't have to stay in a hotel. Hallelujah. True camp meetings. We're going to have some amazing camp meetings there. There's people here in this place tonight. You get to be a part of financing that. Praise God for five amens, three bright eyes, six smiling faces, and 50 shock looks. Now, in the name of Jesus, I, I command a, shock, a smiling face on every one of you. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Karabase Ketira. I was in, I went to, when I went to India, um, you know, most places in India, people are very, very poor. And they said, listen, Pastor, you're not paying for anything. We're paying for it all. We're going to, we are going to be the people that are going to finance the move of God that's going to take place when you come. I want to be, but there is ways to hook up with God in faith, expecting everybody else to do it for you. No, you do it. You do it. You do it. You get in the press. You use your influence. You use the favor that God has given you. You take a risk for the kingdom. You build God's house. You build his house. You build his house. You, hey, I, I, don't, I don't know how many people you've reached out to this past week, but I don't care. You just keep reaching out for more. And then you get, to, you get your car sanctified. And let it be something that God gave you. And then when it's something sanctified and it's something that God gave you, you go pick people up with it. Yep. Ah, let me say that again. You get your car sanctified and suddenly it's really something that God gave you because everybody's like, it's dedicated to the Lord. You didn't do nothing with it for God except get yourself to church on Sunday morning. Huh? Come on, man. Listen to you over there. Come on. One person say, hey, that's good. Praise God. Woo! Hallelujah. And done one thing with that car in the kingdom of God. Get that thing sanctified and dedicated to the use of the Lord. You go pick somebody up. You start to say, you got to sell some boats now. My car's for the kingdom of God. I pick people up, take them to church. People aren't going to come to church because you invite them. They can come to church because you go get them. It's one of the things about, I mean, last Sunday night, we prayed probably six different groups of people for the, the, the things that they're doing in ministry. It's one thing about, wonderful thing about doing ministry in your house, different locations, in communities, because reality of it is you build, build relationships there, and ultimately people come on in and begin to flow into the ministry. And right now, Father is just going after a gleaning. It's a, if it's a gleaning, then it's going to have to be works all over the place in diverse areas, because usually a gleaning is something that's small. It's where, it's where you're going to have, have 10,000 come and only 10 will be left. I said, you'll have 10,000 come, but only 10 will be left out of the gleaning. Huh? And then you got 10 here, 10 there. You got, there's 114 different zip codes in San Diego County. You've got 10 in each zip code. Man, you got yourself, a, that's a group of people. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Huh? Amen. That's 1,400 people right there. Yes. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Come on, man, get busy. Amen. Get busy with all that work yes. you say you're doing in the kingdom. People rolling in the kingdom, rolling in the kingdom, docked to self-interest. Just rolling away. Content look, self-satisfied, just rolling away. Roped to the pier of self-interest. <laughs> you'll get somewhere if you'll just die. Hallelujah. Come on, man. It's true. Just undie. Undie. Launch out into the deep. Get yourself so overwhelmed with the work of the ministry. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. But I'm afraid. What are you afraid of? I'm afraid that if I go into debt, something's going to happen. I feel sorry for you when the earth starts melting. I feel sorry for you when the, thing, when the mountain starts moving out into the sea. Because if you're a little afraid over little finances, my, you, you'll die of a heart attack right there. You're just going to kill over. Your heart should fail you for fear. You, can you hear me? Can you hear, yeah. you, the heart's failing in fear. Did you know that source of, uh, of heart attacks? I got it from the Word of God. I'm not going to allow fear. I'm not going to allow fear. I'm not going to allow worry. I'm not going to allow concern. 
I'm going to rest. He said, I wanted, you to have, I wanted you to have strength and power and ability and quietness and confidence should be your strength. Amen. Isaiah, what is that? 30, that is a powerful verse. Isn't she a wonderful woman of God? If I can't remember a verse scripture, I just look over at her. You know what I find her doing? What I, when I'm taking a nap, you know what she's doing? Reading the Bible. It's beautiful. I'm so blessed. What is that? Would you go to that verse scripture real quick? We're not done here. I ain't even got to my verse yet. I was so fascinated with all the stuff leading up to the verse because it's such a great song. Isaiah 30, 15. Whew. Here's what Papa wants. Here's what he wants. It is, it's actually the verse that I'm getting to as, as well. I just hear Papa saying it. You can hear Papa say, did you know that God's talking to you right now? Amazing. This is like a visitation. He said, oh, God, I want you to appear to me. I want you to reveal yourself to me. I want, oh, Father, I want, I, I want you to give me understanding wisdom. Behold, this is a visitation right now. It's an encounter right now. Father, God Almighty is talking to you. And all you got to do is say, I'm going to do that. And he'll empower. Because he's empowered you already. He's saying, this is what I want you to do. He says right here, Isaiah 30, 15. For thus says the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest shall ye be saved. In, he says to us, in quietness and in confidence shall you, shall you be strengthened. And, and that's what we're getting ready to say right here. Listen to this. Because he's driving at something. He's driving at something in this fellowship, in this relationship, in this upheaval, in this catastrophe. He's telling us a little highlight. Hey, there's a provision in heaven. Look in the words of heaven. That's right there at the middle of it. Then he gets back over here and he returns. Come behold the works of the Lord. What desolation he's made in the earth. So he returns back to all that is going on. All the upheaval. All of the changes that take place in, 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 the, in the, uh, the, the, the circumstances of life. He maketh wars to cease. Under the end of the earth, he breaketh the bow. He cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in fire. The Father, in the midst of all the catastrophe, in the midst of all the upheaval, in the midst of all the war, in the midst of all the violence, in the midst of all the tyranny, in the midst of all the oppression, he speaks and it all comes to an end. He stops it. Be still and know that I am God. People, can you listen to me? I mean, the scriptures crying out, when your heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than me. I mean, I don't care what's going on. It just, it's just a fellowship. It's a communion. Whatever's harassing you, just come over and say, I'm redeemed. Praise God. I'm in the holies of holies. Lord, I'd like to be caught away now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your bread. Thank you. I got the bread. I'm good to go. I got all food I need to eat. I got the bread of heaven. I got unlimited spiritual supply. Of provision from God Almighty. Looky here. Be still. Whatever's threatening you, be still. Whatever scares you, be still. Whatever overwhelms you, be still. Relax. When the death angel came into Egypt that night and began to kill all the firstborn, they were supposed to recline. Put their hands behind their back and relax. That's what I. That's how I learned it. Things going on. I said, I'm gonna take a nap. That's Jesus. Storm. Jesus. Storm. Storms coming up. Threatening. I said, Oh, I'm gonna take a nap. Everybody else is freaking out. Carest thou not that we perish? What an accusation. What an accusation. What? He's snoring. <laughs> you know, I, can't, I, can't, I, I can't wait till somebody, Elizabeth, begins to be, advance these things in film and just have this crazy bailing water, waves coming over the boat, basically it disappearing under the wave and emerging on the other side. Everybody's drenched, screaming, holding on to whatever they can clutch. Some people basically holding off to the side and they're going, what's Jesus doing? He's snoring. Wake him up in quietness, in rest. There's great confidence. When you've got great confidence, you're going to have quietness. You're going to have rest. You're going to be able to be still. Literally, it means quit fighting. Quit trying so hard. Quit trying to make it happen. 
quit trying to take up God's slack. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of armies is with us. Yes. The God of J Jacob is our refuge. I mean, grab a hold of it right now. I want you to grab yes. a, a break the strong hold of stress and fear and depression and doubt and unbelief. I break it in the name of Jesus. I cut it off of you. I call you over into a place of communion in God. God has prophesied over you. Believe what he has said. So shall you prosper. So shall you prosper. So shall you prosper. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 What is that? Is that Psalms 22? Let God arise. What is that Psalm? Is it Psalm 22? Is it Psalm 24? Huh? Aunt Mama says it's Psalm 21. Probably is. Open it. Open up that scripture. Let's just go look at it on our way to something else. I want to show you in the word real quickly. Huh? Let God arise. Once again, we're just talking about the streams that make glad the city of God. We're talking about a well of water, a wellspring. We're talking about the joy of the Lord that is your strength in the day of adversity. We're talking a joy that is a fellowship and a communion, a caught away in the fact that you're tabernacling with him because that's the Feast of Tabernacles. Nehemiah chapter 8, that's the Feast of Tabernacles. 68.1. Look at that with me. That's not the one I wanted, but that'll do. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Let them also that hate him flee before him. Isaiah, go to Psalm chapter 24 with me real quick. I'm just called over there. Psalms 24. I feel a calling to Psalms 24. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm -hmm. How do you even break into this? Mm. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I'm just understanding his authority over all things. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Father is the one who is commanding everything, the rising of the sun in the morning, the setting of the sun in the evening. He, he speaks and the, ca and, the, and, and the cows calve. Huh? They bring forth their young. He opens up his hands and feeds all things. I mean, he is, I mean, when all of a sudden God becomes the, who he really is in our thinking, in our action, in our attitude, faith begins to arise. We yes, begin to, to move out with him. Turn with me quickly to, to um, huh? Yeah, yeah, I want that one too. Yeah, that's, go, go to Psalms 21, go, go to Psalms 21, 13. Here, here we go. Here's, 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 here, here it is. Psalms 21, 13. Here we go. My wife's over here moving in the word of knowledge. She's telling me the scripture I couldn't remember. Amen. I love that. Come on now. That's the way to do it. In the, in the context of being still and knowing that I am God, here the Lord says, here with the cry out in Psalms 21, 13, Be thou exalted, O Lord. Be exalted, Lord, in your own strength. We will sing and praise your power. We're going to sing and praise what you about to do about what the things are going on through what you are, your hand has supplied through the work that you are at actually doing on our behalf at this very moment in time. So go look here. Go look with me quickly. Exodus 14. And, and I don't want to just you can't just let this be stories of events of things that happened to people in the past. You've got to recognize that the same God that talked to us about this who did it in them, is declaring these things, has revealed it so that you and I will believe him so he can do it in us, that he can do it in our midst right now, through our lives right now. He wants to talk to us like this. He wants to be a provider. You let God be your provider, he can also be your perfecter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Exodus chapter 14. I believe it's Verse 13. And of course, you know the situation. 
They're up against it because Pharaoh's coming to, to, to claim them again. It's impossible odds. It's an impossible situation. They're outnumbered, you know, in every, every, in every way. They don't have weapons. The people coming after them do have weapons. <laughs> they don't know how to fight. The people coming after them do know how to fight. They have their feet. The people coming after them have horses. This is just outnumbered in every way. And here's what the Lord says. The panic sh sets in. Don't tell me the panic doesn't set in. Huh? What would you start doing? Swimming? Are you with me? Huh? Right? Come on now. I can do this. I can swim. That's probably what I could have easily started doing. I do that a lot. I say, okay, you know, here we're going to get this thing done. I'm going to swim. I'm gonna Come on, let's just swim. Everybody jump in. Start swimming. Got to work a miracle for us. Here's what the Lord says again. In the midst, listen, in the midst of the chaos, in the midst of the upheaval, in the midst of the catastrophe, in the midst of the impossibility, there's no way that this is going to work out good. The Lord says, just stand, be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I utter my voice and the earth melts. Be still that I utter my voice and I command a thing and all things are created. Be still. Just understand that there can be great calamity and war, but I'll break the bow of war and I'll command peace and everything will be silent. Amen. Just quit being in charge. Quit acting like I'm not, quit acting, quit acting like that I'm not a very present God in time of help. Quit acting like that somehow I'm aloof from you and I don't care about you. I love everybody but you, you, you. Jesus loves everyone but me, me, me. Jesus loves everyone but me, me, me. You know, there's a lot of people I find in this situation. They listen to the horror story. They dimmed the lights and turned on the channel of a horror story about how somehow God's got something against them. Somehow it, he's there for everybody else, but somehow they are just outside of the boundary of grace. <laughs> I don't care how much you shake, how much you holler, how much you feel drunk in the spirit, how much you feel flighty, fluffy, or anything else. At the end of the day, you have to have power to say to the devil, you're not touching me. I'm not going with your sin. I'm not listening to your lies. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Lord's had me in a lot of different contexts, contexts where people, and he put me there, where people had great, you know, great, there were great presence, there was great manifest presence of God. People were shaking and hollering and laughing. Sometimes I wasn't really even feeling much of the move of God at all, but people were getting carried away with whatever little was there. And at any rate, the Lord had me stand up and, and take the mic and gave me the position in so many different positions, so many different places through the 90s to take the mic and hand the position and say, you've experienced the move of God. Now, what are you going to do with it in the morning? God's presence has come to you because there was places and times, well, I'm going to tell you right now, I was with Carlos Anaconda sometimes, and I'm telling you, the atmosphere was so charged with the presence of God. You talk about the lightnings of God. How, how could anybody even stand? Intense. I mean, the... Uh, the vibrating electricity of the glory and the power of God. And then look at me with, what are you going to do with it? There's the presence of God. You, you're here in a move of God that people have been crying out for. You're right in the middle of it, enjoying it. What are you going to do with it? And we watched over and again. I watched in so many different places I could talk about. I watched where people sat down at the table of the Lord, First, Second Corinthians chapter 10, sat down at the table of the Lord and rose up to play. Sit down at the table of the Lord, and you know what, the, what when, you re, when you read that, that's what Israel did. They said at the communion with God, and then they rose up to play with devils, committing all kinds of lewd acts of immorality and fornication around false gods. True. And Paul applied that to people that, uh, in the church. And said, watch out for it. Huh? There was no willingness to grab a hold of this communion. He's my refuge. He's my life. 
He's my, he's my God. He's my keeper. He's my protector. I've come into a, a union with him. I've come into a, a fellowship with him. His life is my, what my life is. My life is all about what he's doing. My life is about heaven. My life is about the will of the Father. My life is about pursuing those things that God has entrusted me to be and to do. I'm breaking some curses off some houses tonight. I am breaking some curses off. Them. You know how the curse comes? Sin. Unrepented sin. Break the curse off tonight. I'm going to break it. Hallelujah. This is a convenient chair to kick. Was no, no. no reason for anybody to get too upset. I just feel like kicking, hitting things in the spirit and smashing stuff tonight. Hmm? I want you to be done with the devil. I mean, literally done with him. Done with him. Papa's giving you the authority to be done with him. To run him off, to vanquish him, to, 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 to eliminate him from every territory which he claims. Beginning with your own personal life and then moving into everybody else's life. We're here tonight to teach you how to do that. We're here tonight to demonstrate that to you. We're here to model for you what it means to press in and to be hungry, to see more of the demonstration of the power of God. Not sit around and play, you know, Kesara, sing, sing the song that the Lord, Kesara, Sara, whatever it would be, would be. But to begin to pursue the will of the Father, which those things which He's commanded and not allow anything else. Amen. Yes, that's true. He'd be exalted in His own strength. Amen. The Lord says in Exodus 14, 13, by his servant Moses to the people, he says, fear not. First thing, you hear the Lord say it over, it's the command of the Holy Ghost. He says to Jairus, when, when all of a sudden there comes a report to Jairus' house, they say, oh, bother not the master, bother, bother not the rabbi. Your daughter's dead. First thing he says is fear not, Jairus. Don't fear, only believe. Fear not. First thing the father tries to get her attention, is to have our confidence in Him, to, have, to say, you're my refuge, you're God, my God, you're the very present God in time of help. I'm going to be still and I'm going to know that you're God. I'm going to watch you arise and be exalted in your own strength. I don't know, I'm just going to stand here and behold the salvation of the Lord. Father's just looking for that kind of response, that kind of faith, that kind of willingness to believe that He cares for us that way, that if He spared not His own Son for us, when we were dead in our trespasses and sin, He gave His, He commended His love towards us in such a way that He spared not His own Son for us, how much, but offered Him up for the sins of us all, how much more shall He also by Christ Jesus right now, by Christ Jesus right now, <laughs> by Christ Jesus right now, because I'm drinking the blood. Ah. Mm. Bread of heaven, I'm not living on manna, praise God. I got bread of heaven. Mm, that's fat bread. Hallelujah, not lean bread. How much more shall he also right now, by Christ Jesus, through Christ Jesus, through him, the same one that brought us salvation, same communion that brought us salvation, freely give us all things. Huh? How does faith work? Still. Quiet, confident, happy. The joy of the Lord should be your strength in the day of adversity. Go ahead, drink the sweet. 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 Mm. Go ahead, eat the fat. Mm. Huh. Send portions to everybody who hadn't got anything prepared for themselves. Huh? -huh. For the joy of the Lord should be your strength in the day of adversity. It's a wellspring. It's a river that makes glad the city of God. Hallelujah. It's delighting yourself in the Lord. So giving yourself over to the control of the Holy Ghost that he can move right in. When Anna was like a size of a piece of butter, a pound and three, one pound, three ounces, just a little bitty tinny thing who nobody believed was she was going to live. I walk in the hospital to say, Allie, she's not going to live. There's no way baby's going to live. I was already drunk in the Holy Ghost. I was just drunk. I was drunk. I was laughing. I was giggly. I was drunk. I, my life was so given to the Lord. He then takes me into that secret place so that I cannot fear. Amen. And, I, and I, they said, no, no, you don't understand. I said, I do understand. She's fine. They're going to be fine. They look back at me. You know, first of all, they had a little bit of honor and respect towards me. Now they're considering calling security. <laughs> 
Because I'm laughing. I'm, I'm drunk. I'm drunk in the Holy Ghost, man. I'm just drunk. It's the time to be drunk. I'm God away in glory. Nothing can touch me. Suddenly, her, all of her vital signs that were all messed up, they all, looked, they all came back around. Praise God. They thought it was, a, they thought it was a, you know, the fluids that they were giving her. No, it was the faith in the room. Hallelujah. Fear not. Amen. Praise God, you give yourself over to the realm of the Holy Ghost. Which way you got to move, have the move of the Holy Ghost? Because left to ourselves, to human ability, we will fear. We will be overcome with fear. It's going to be fight or flight. There's just no alternative. That's what it's going to be. That's the human condition. Praise God, we've learned how to begin to flow with the Holy Ghost because we've given ourselves to the move of the Spirit because we're pressing into what, that which God has, has given because we're cooperating with those things that He has commanded. Amen. <laughs> He, he, he hides us away in a secret place. Huh? To dwell in a secret place of the Most High. To abide under the shadow of the Most High. Hallelujah. He that dwells in a secret place. Who abides under the shadow of the Most High. We're not going to be afraid. We're not going to fear anything. Nothing describes that greater than the cloud of His glory. The glory of His presence. The glory of His presence. The glory of His presence. Ah, the fellowship of the Holy Ghost. Nothing is signed. Describes. You can tell me all about how that you abide in the secret place of the Most High. If you're not being filled with the Holy Ghost, you're lying to yourself. You're the only one who believes that. Are you listening to me? God don't believe it and I don't believe it. And the sound of it isn't in your voice yet. Yeah. You're going to have to talk to Father more. And it's going to have to be a prayer of faith, not a prayer of doubt and unbelief, not a prayer of concern and worry, not a prayer of, oh, God, how long? <laughs> Until I die in the point of time when you should come and visit us with your great power. That's doubt and unbelief prayer. He's here. He's very present God. He's already poured out His Spirit upon all flesh. All I got to do is take a hold of it, lay hold of it. All I got to do is learn how to tap in and move with Him. Tap in and move with Him. The sound of your voice will change. The expression on your face will, face will change. The moving of your faith will take on a whole other dimension. Suddenly you'll begin to step into the inheritance that God has for you. And oh, what a great thing. You'll look around and go, how on earth did you ever get here? <laughs> Ann and I, we were, we were we, we, when we, we got married, we came to San Diego, we rented a house. The criteria of renting the house, or newlyweds, was is the living room big enough to have church. We searched, we found a house that living room was big enough to have church state street right across the street from the fire department in the path of the airport. But the living room was great. Huh? That's what we had. We had church. And then one morning I woke up and the Lord said, it was Sunday. I woke up and the Lord said, go buy a house. Okay. <laughs> Praise God. Okay, I'll go buy a house. I tell Ann, I said, we're going to go buy a house. She looked at me like, Yeah. With what money? Because it's like, you know, no money. No, the Lord said, go buy a house. Where, where are we going to buy a house? I don't know. I got in the car and I drove. I drove down a road I've never been before. I discovered that if you just simply find yourself obeying God, just go on where you find yourself being led. Yes. I mean, it's like this. Ann, we're, we're, just a couple of days ago, Ann lost her license. She thought, well, I lost my license in Costco. They'll find it. They'll get a hold of me. And then what happens is she gets to the che checkout, her credit card that she was using, you know, not credit card, but you know, bank card that she was using, didn't work. She had to come out the, at the car to pay the, for the groceries that she just bought. So she comes out of the car because her credit card, won't, or the bank card won't work. She comes out of the car, gives another bank card, walks back inside, the cashier says, no, you need to go to customer, the, the customer uh, support in the back. So she goes to customer support, and she just happens to say, well, I can't go over there right on that side. I'm going to go over here on this side. She goes, oh, it's just over on the side that just is the thing to do, right? Just an apparent thing to do. She looks over and glances, there's her license. No, no, I mean, it's just the angel of the Lord, just the direction of the Lord for everything. He's watching over everything. And look, this, this just happens in our life all the time, doesn't it? All the time. It's, it's crazy. It is wild. 
It is beautiful. It is amazing. Every time we're just standing going, whoa. <laughs> God is in our midst. We shall not be moved. We are like Zion. We are like Mount Zion. He's just everywhere we go. He's just there, right in the big midst of it. You're present God. He is. He is. Because we already believe He is. And we're about a master's business. And we don't accept anything else. It's true. Just find yourself being led, just obeying God, just walking every, just walking out a normal everyday existence, and you've got God on every side of you, directing you, helping you, strengthening you, empowering you, blessing you. Father says, stand still. Fear not, stand still. Be still. Quit fighting. Quit trying to make it happen. Quit trying to do it. Don't be concerned. Don't move. Watch what God's going to do now. I've been in meetings before. Crusty, in prison, stale, demon power, resistance meetings. Huh? And the Lord just say, just stand there and look at them. Just don't say nothing. Just stand there. <laughs> and watch the Father just break right through that. It's just amazing. I mean, the worst conditions, he says, just back up, I'll take it in this. Yeah, tomorrow night, you can hammer them. Tonight, I'm just, it's all, it's all on me. This one's too big. He is amazing. He's amazing. Can we just learn how to trust him? Can we just learn how to look to him? Can we learn how to be confident in him? Can we begin to recognize that we are overwhelmed with the glory cloud of heaven? We've been given a provision that goes beyond the wildest imagination. Most said, fear not, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. I take that every day. Stand still, fear not, stand still. And behold the salvation that the Lord will show you today. We go buy a house. Well, I'm driving. Now turn on this road. Okay, this looks, this road looks good. Does this look good? Let's go up that mountain. That mountain looks good. We always love mountains anyways. Let's go up that mountain. Drive up this mountain. Go to this one traffic light town called Poway. On the 76. No traffic lights. 67. This is cool. Look at that rocky mountain. <laughs> Driving. Hey, look at those oak trees. Look at that crazy mailbox way up. There. Let's turn down that road. Big mailbox sticking up and 15 foot high. That's a wild mailbox. Air mail lane. <laughs> Driving down the road. Oh, look at the horses. Cool. Look at that field. That's a beautiful field. What's so beautiful about that field? Let's stop right here. Look at that field. It's just attracted to it. Huh? That's the way God does it. He's drawn. It's beautiful. Nothing beautiful about that field. <laughs> I promise you, there's nothing beautiful about that field. It's a ragged, dried out field with one oak tree. There's nothing beautiful. It, the Holy Ghost was there. Angels were there. And I just, you're just being drawn in. I'm sitting there. I get out of the car. I'm looking at that field. I'm going, this is a beautiful field. I turn around by me. Behind me, there's a for sale sign for the house across the street. I turn, I look at my wife. I said, can you believe it? She's like, what? This is the house the Lord has got for us. <laughs> I promise you. We go to the bank. The bank says to us, how much for this house to the real estate? And how much money we make? She said, didn't you show them some other houses in their financial bracket? I said, we're not interested. That's our house right there. She said, how much money you have? So I'm not going to, I'm making it up as the Holy Ghost gives it to me. <laughs> if I have said, I don't have any money, we would have had to end the conversation. So I'm just like waiting. Okay, God, I, I had to get the faith. Come on. I got $5,000. I have $5. I got $5,000. It's a faith statement. It was a word of God. It was Holy Ghost coming out of my mouth. It was not a lie. It was not a lie. It was a word of faith. It's, I have $5,000. When do you need it? 
The day that they needed it, I had 5,000 bucks. <laughs> no, 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 I did. Now, I got a person living. I'm just talking to you about walking with God. Just the blessing of God. Just fight. Father taking you into a realms of faith because you're willing to fear not. Listen to me. The person that lived across the street from me one day comes and visits us. Because one morning I woke up and the Lord said, I shall cause men to heap into your bosom. I'm in an audible voice in my dreams. I shall cause men to heap into your bosom. I said to Ann, I got up and said, could you make some coffee? The Lord's going to cause men to heap into our bosom. <laughs> I said, I'm going to go buy a for sale sign. We're going to sell this place because God's getting ready to do something big. So I go to buy a for sale sign and I run into this realtor just out of nowhere, I see I'm in some house. He said, you know what? There's this amazing property. You ought to look, look into it. We go and God puts us on 320 acres of land. Not some years later, when we were in the middle of, of developing that property, the woman who was our next door neighbor happens to be the head of the Horse Trail Society who's going to get a horse trail through the program. Okay? for the Horse Trail Society of Ramona, okay? She looks at me and she goes, how do you move from 17067 Whirlwind Lane to all of this? I said, the blessing of the living God. How do you, how do you go from that to all of this beautiful thing? Because I made the Lord my dwelling place and my habitation. I don't have any fear. I act like I own it all. Amen. I act like it's mine. I act like that I'm an heir of God. Amen. Can you imagine? A co-inheritor with him. I act like that if I ask the Father anything, he will do it. I don't play pretend with God and ask Father to do something, and I'm just not going to move out of it and sit around in the fat position of, of disobedience and unbelief. You listen to me. Yes. I'm willing to move. I'm willing to get up off the couch. Are you listening? Yes. I'm talking to you. Amen. God wants an army. Amen. He is the Lord of armies. He's, he will utter his voice. He's looking for people who will respond when he utters his voice and say, and say hmm, well, did he utter his voice? Are you sure that was his utterance? I mean, I could have been something else. Are you sure that's what he said? Are you sure that's what he meant? Mm, 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 mm. I want you to get in a relationship with God where a Father can show you things that are you thought impossible. Amen. Come on, that's a, I mean, when you come to the meeting, you got to do that song. You got to do that song. Joshua, come be part of the camp meeting on Thursday night, Friday night, up in Aberdeen, Washington. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Habra Bastekeya. Te Palana Mea Su. Habandeya Hust. Hallelujah. Praise God. How many of you remember Debbie Rich? You remember Debbie Rich? That's who we're going to go be with. Yeah. They're starting a Bible school up there. They're doing camp meetings. I think this is their second one. And we're just so honored and whew, the relationship and things that God's doing. And, the people that Father's already brought together from all over the place. And we're in expectation for signs and wonders and miracles on the level of God's people moving in the gifts of the Spirit. I want Papa, listen, Papa's, told me, Papa's made it very clear. It's time for there to be tongues interpretation time. It's time for there to be matured people in God who know how to prophesy because they're not sitting around in fear. Just paralyzed with fear. But what if it's that wrong thing? But what if I open my mouth and nothing comes out? But what if I begin to sing and I go off key? What if I breathe and then die? I mean, these crazy things. You know. It just turns your heart towards heaven. He begins to become so caught away with him that he redeemed your life from destruction. He delivered you from the grave. We're not done with church yet.
Baby, what's the next scripture I want to go to? <laughs> no, I'll give you. <laughs> 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 I'm going to tell you, Pope. I, I, Bruce, you better bought a fashina. Yeah, I said, kind of, I may have to come over to you. This a fire Holy Ghost woman, when she starts preaching, come on now. Yes. We've got to have Elizabeth minister again, huh? Yes. Get her flowing in the Holy Ghost. She smiles the whole time she preaches. Yes. If you know anybody who's really timid and threatened by, you know, anybody who raises their voice, just bring them to Elizabeth's meeting. She <laughs> smiles the whole time. <laughs> Big old smile. <laughs> Second Chronicles chapter 20. Isn't that powerful? Yes. Second Chronicles chapter 20. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's powerful, isn't it? Yeah. Powerful message. Yeah. I just hope I'm right. Hmm? I'm confident. I'm confident that I'm right. We're just going to go over here and check. Hmm? Great message on Jehoshaphat, isn't it? Are we there? Are we in the right place? Yeah. He said, the Lord says, he says, um, let's see, where is it at here? Help me find it. Verse 17. You won't need to fight today. <laughs> I'm living in the rest. He's the Lord our rest. He's the Lord of, hallelujah. He's the Lord rest. Huh, come unto me, all ye that weary and heavy laden, I shall give you rest. You won't need to fight today. We're living in the day of the Lord. Praise God. You won't need to fight today. <laughs> hallelujah. 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 You're already outnumbered in every way. You outnumbered. You're wondering, what are we going to do? Who could we form an alliance with? And God says, nope, not fine today. You're singing. <laughs> you guys are going, where's our new weapons? Uh, your new weapons is going to be praise. <laughs> You're going to send the singers out. <laughs> what kind of strategy is that? What kind of crazy idea is that? Has grown up by his death day. Has all, including God, lost all sensibility. No, he's God. He utters his voice and the earth melts. <laughs> oh, the same God is ready to utter his voice before his army. And utter his voice before his people who know how to hear his voice. Not everybody, he's, his armies. He's talking about a people who's highly disciplined, who is some completely committed with their whole life to the cause of his divine purpose. They've been conditioned to die on his, at his command. The Lord utters his voice before his armies. Whew. That's the revivals. Those are the movings of God. That's the great harvest. That's the, un, that's the unstoppable people where, where you've labored and everybody you've talked to, all they've done is persecuted you and look at you like you've got two heads and three eyes. Like you've completely lost your mind. And then all of a sudden, a moving of God comes and everybody you talk their heart to, their heart melts. They're gripped by the power of God because you never stop. You never stop. You kept going on. Persecu persecution could not stop you. Threatenings could not stop you. People looking down at you and thinking that you completely taken, you know, leave of all sensibility could not stop you. That's where the Lord brings forth his glory. That's where Papa brings forth his honor. That's where a vessel becomes broken. That's where a vessel becomes totally abandoned of all self-interest, who cares no longer for themselves, but for whom they live for, for Christ whom they serve. Papa's talking to you. Big faith. I'm talking big faith here. Faith works by love. Huh? Perfect love casts out all fear. All fear is the realm of doubt, unbelief. It's the realm of being paralyzed by demon spirits. Paralyzed. Have you ever been so afraid you couldn't move your arm? I have. It's just that intense. Your life is coming to an end. 
<laughs> we, were, uh, we were with, praise God for the anointing. When we were doing in Zan Zambia, we were doing the meetings in Zambia. A dear, dear, two dear women of God. The, the kings and the emperor wanted to go do the walk with the lions. Now, Phil said, don't walk with the lions because they're lions. That's an African thing. Don't walk with the lions. So the two girls are trying to get stuff ready for the meeting. One of the girls, her husband's one of the primary leaders there. They went looking for the crew who went walking with the lions. And they're walking with the lions and do not know it. And they're not on the tour. <laughs> they're lost in the woods with the real lions. And suddenly, a female lioness jumps up. Pretty good, in, pretty good, huh? And when they do that, it's freaky. And begins to charge them. They're dead. When she sits out, she's not stopping till she's drinking blood. Praise God for the angels of the Lord, huh? Uh, praise God for our Holy Ghost meetings. That lioness sat down. She just sat down. Angel of the Lord's doctor, she just sat down. The girls are like. <laughs> they, you're, you, can't, you can't breathe. Fear, you can't breathe. You cannot talk. You, can, you're like, <laughs> you want to say help? <laughs> Oh, praise God for his goodness. But, oh, what happens? What happens when you're not moved? I mean, you know, where you're so overwhelmed in a glory realm that nothing, that nothing can touch you. Fear cannot touch you. Oh, where fear cannot touch you, where you can begin to move in faith. Where you have authority over every creature, over every power, over every serpent, over every form of poison, every form of death, where God is so in control of your life. You hold not to your life anymore. You know for certain that he is the one who is your help, that he is the one who has ordained your protection, that he is the one who has designed the, 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 the span of your life. Yeah. Oh, should all men believe these things? Wow. In the midst of the church, what faith? There would be no fear. Everybody would be equally bold. Everyone would be equally brave. Everyone would begin to step out. Everyone would begin to lay hold. Everyone be, would begin to continue to have the increase, to watch God work one miracle, to use one thing after another. You just don't know how God will do it. He'll hook things together. He'll make one miracle after another. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Daniel was walking across, trying to walk across the expanse of the ranch the other day and said, my God, how do these things happen? Dad started working and he came out of school making $16,000 a year. $16,000 a year. I mean, you talk, I mean, I, when I, when, before I went to school, I was making twice that much money as a survey engineer. <laughs> I go to school through the grueling challenges of school for almost five years to now be reduced half pay and then to be locked into that thing. But God's not locked into anything when you just step out and say, I got a vision, I'm reaching out. I got a vision, I'm reaching out. I got a vision, I'm reaching out. I got a vision, I'm gonna reach out. I got a vision, I'm gonna reach out. I'm gonna walk over there where everybody else is afraid to go. And it doesn't matter what happens. There's no loss with God. I'm not slowing down. I'm not going to any way be faint hearted. I'm not going to, I am going to be like an oak tree. I'm not going to be moved. I'm going to be like Mount Zion that will not be moved. Come on, people. Papa wants to take you to a place that you cannot even imagine that you can go there. Cannot even imagine. You can't even imagine. Hallelujah. God's going to make you great. 
He's going to greatly increase you and increase your seed and the fruit of your womb. Hallelujah. And the works of your hands. Hallelujah. There is going to be no limitation. Hallelujah. Because faith is completely rested over into that realm of relationship. And you know that what God said, he's going to also perform it. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm so excited about it. Praise the name of the Lord. Somebody says, I want that too. What's yours? Hallelujah. I'm just going to prophesy as the Lord gives it to me. I'm going to speak the word of faith. If it comes out and you grab a hold of it, it's already done. Papa's already prophesied. I mean, my goodness, I'm declaring good because the anointing of the Lord takes the word of God and makes it specially applicable to you so that you can hear it and you grab a hold of it and begin to move with it. The Father's already prophesied. Move with it. You can't be paralyzed anymore. That's why I'm not going to stand around and let you be despondent. I'm going to see some kind of movement of your lips with some kind of sound coming out of that movement of your lips. Some kind of response of your face, disposition, your body movement. More than your little finger, something's going on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo! That is faith. That's faith. That's faith right there. That's faith. I can feel it. That's faith. That's moving with God. That's the power that overcomes the world. That's the conquering power that overcomes the world. That's faith that begins to move in the greatness of God and the supply of God. It's laid up the wealth of the wicked for the righteous. The righteous who are about doing his work to subdue, to conquer and subdue, to take this gospel to the uttermost parts of the earth. I will be with Fidel Castro. I will lead him to Christ Jesus. Whether he follows or not, I will. I will be with Raul Castro. I will see that great uh, outpouring of the Holy Ghost take place in that 75,000 seater stadium. I will stand in Kashmir in their, in, their, in their cricket stadium and I will not have any threats from anybody. God, the power of God will come and the blessing of God will flow upon that nation. I'm telling you, great signs and wonders will be exploited. Hallelujah. Before them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Great exploits in God will be displayed before them. <laughs> Explosive works of God will be demonstrated in their midst. What are you going to do? Because it starts with passion, not with silence. It starts with a moving. <laughs> Come on, people. Father, I'll make you so bold, so brave, so confident. Amen. Nothing threatens you. Amen. And I'm telling you, the people that would do you harm, they see it in your face and it scares them to death. Because they're only, they're only used to bullying and, and overcoming people through fear. And when you don't have any fear, they're freaked completely out. They have, they're stunned. Amen. Amen. Scares them to death. Amen. We will turn the Bible into a spanking pad. Very quickly. Lift your hands towards heaven right now. In Jesus' name. Praise God for that, eh? Praise God you lift your hand right up there. Amen. We're excited about that. Just receive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see how, you see how Anna has matured and developed. How she's flowing in anointing. You see her flowing in anointing during worship? I'm telling you right now, she is, she was bringing down the fire. It was beautiful. Huh? We went we had to go through some challenging moments. All of you bore with me. <laughs> And Papa being the corrector and instructor and in between the screeches and screams and the crying outs. But praise God for the maturity. Huh? Because we all sowing into them. They're going to be Holy Ghost women. Signs and wonders women of God. That's what we purposed. That's what we purposed. I praise God. I praise God for you, Brother Allen. I love you so much. I just want you to know. I was thinking about you and... Gary, today, I want, you, I, want, I want you to know this. I'm happy to ordain, Gary. And I, I'm so blessed and I'm so honored that you want to be part of this ministry, <coughs> that you would allow 
me to have such an influence? And does this church and ministry have such an influence in your son-in-law? And I mean, uh, Pastor Allen has been a faithful man of God and his sons of God for what, 30, 40 years. Your dad also planted that church there. I mean, it's wonderful where people just want to look and say, look, I want to be a part of that. I want to touch that. I want, I want to join hands with you. There's, there's something precious here. There's something special here. Because you start touching the anointing like that. When the anointing of God becomes precious to you and it becomes special to you. I'm telling you, you're going to inherit something. Yes. Now Papa's going to be able to move in your life. Say, no, I don't want you to do that. Unless you, you, I'm going to turn my Bible into a pad on your behind right now. He'll get right in your face. He won't pull your hair out and beat you. Like Nehemiah did. But the Lord blessed Nehemiah. He blessed him. It's amazing. I did tell you. Isn't that amazing? Some of those verses of Scripture, just, they just kind of mess everything up, don't they? It's a little harsh. <laughs> Ain't nobody ever disciplined their kids like that. Everybody knew you're serious. <laughs> yeah. uh, hallelujah. He wasn't just preaching a sermon to tickle the ears, was he? <laughs> he wasn't just trying to influence people. Draw more people unto himself because of his charisma. <laughs> Pulling out hair, beat folks. <laughs> Go to church, get cursed, beat up, and pull their hair out. <laughs> and you ain't even done anything wrong yet. You were just thinking about it. No, I'm not kidding you. You don't read it. Hear it. Ezra is the one who told them to divorce their strange wives and send their kids away. Nehemiah was just getting upset because they were thinking about going and getting some strange wives. <laughs> Pretty radical stuff. Yes. I love that. Let me finish this. <sighs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> You know, the other Sunday night, we had to get up real early in the morning and leave. And I thought, well, we'll get to the meeting. We won't go too long tonight. <laughs> I just enjoy the presence of the Lord. Camping around his word. Thinking about the things that he's promised laying hold of the promises of God, pressing into this realm, huh? letting the Spirit of the Lord minister to us by His Word, build us up in faith and yes. confidence and yes. boldness. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> I was out working with some guys the other day and they started slacking off just a little bit, getting worn out. I promise you I was doing as much if not more than everybody was. And we were on the steak pounders. Two steak pounders. And you don't do, if you're going that slow, come on, we got something wrong. You're getting after it, right? And I said, one brother, I said, just think about the mighty men of David. They fought all day long. I mean, they put that sword in their hand and they cleaved their hand, cleaved to the sword. They couldn't have been in their hand just all day long. It was a special anointing. I said, I just keep doing this by the anointing. I grabbed after the anointing. I'm telling you, I got some people starting to move. It was beautiful. People started responding. I had some response to faith right there. Grabbing the holy anointing, suddenly getting a fresh wind. Hallelujah. I mean, when you just hear the word and you get built up in faith and say, wait a minute, I can, I can actually get an anointing to be able to do this. You know, and it's like the sun's beating down on me at 105 degrees. If it, at least it feels like it. If it's not that hot. And we've been going at this since early in the morning and now it's seven at night. I mean, why are you gonna, where is it, where is it that you're gonna, you, you're gonna limit God or are you gonna back off? Just, just go with, just do it, just look. Amen. Let's just have a walk with God where we can Amen. just step into the realms of supernatural provision, Amen. supernatural Amen. faith. Amen. We don't Amen. faint, we don't weary. We walk, we, we walk, we don't faint, we run. We walk, we don't weary, we faint. We run, we don't faint. Hallelujah. 
we mount up with wings. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You walk, you run, then you mount up. You walk, you run, then you begin to fly. Hallelujah. 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 Father, I thank you that you take Jake. Jake, I got a word for you. I got a word for you. Father, is going to take you into the very midst by the Spirit. He's going to take you into the very midst of unreached people groups. And through your prayer and through your intercession, as you go there, you're going to see in the Spirit. You're going to be able to pray specifically for them. You're going to be able to go to them. You're not even, in fact, you don't even have to go to them physically or bodily. You don't even have to go to them physically or bodily. Listen to me. You're just going to go in the spirit through prayer and you're going to see nations change because you already on it, man. You've already committed yourself. I know you could have done anything you want to do. You could choose to do anything you want to do and you've laid your life down on the mission field. Watch what God's going to do. Those things that you've been experiencing, they are from God. I told you the other day that I did not know. I was just going to stand with you in faith that they, that, that, that was something God was doing through you. But now I do know. I hear it. I'm telling you, it's a God thing. Father is going to give you a special intercession. intercession. You're going to know exactly what's going on within the framework of their culture, of their society, of the issues that they're dealing with. You're going to be able to speak into it and their heart's going to be changed. And yeah, just as you felt that you could speak and they would repeat it. I'm telling you right now, they are going to repeat those things in the spirit that you proclaim in the heavens. Yeah. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise. You want to, you want to get into some supernatural stuff? Get all the way out there. Yes, Amen. Get all the way in with God. Amen. Get all the way in with God. Put your life to risk. Amen. So then I'm gonna, I want to just close here, just finish up this verse of Scripture in verse 17. He says, you should not fight today. You do not need to fight in this battle. He says, set yourself. Set yourself. Determine in yourself. Be set. Be fixed. Here's what you're going to do. You're going to be still. You're going to be still. You're not going to move. On your own strength, on your own ability. You're going to set yourself. You're going to fix yourself on what I'm telling you, what I'm commanding you to do. You're going to be still. And you're going to see the salvation of the Lord. Fear not. Do not be dismayed. Do not be worried. Do not be concerned. Don't take any thought for it. Don't be concerned about it. <laughs> Stand in front of your enemies and have communion. Here's what I heard the Lord say tonight. Such a powerful word. I'm, as we gave... Uh, forth tongues, interpretation of tongues to you. Everything was done decently and in order. Praise God. How? And the anointing of the Lord would feel, could be felt. There was no confusion in the midst of it. Praise God. Yes. We prophesied and declared by song and by thanksgiving and said that, O oh Lord, as God began to intercede, that our eyes would be open. God's saying, by His Spirit, that he desires to open up your eyes that you may see that there's more with you than are with your enemy. That God is on your side. That he's there to take your part. He will uphold you. Anyone who puts their trust in him are not going to be ashamed. Ezra put his trust in God and he was too ashamed to go and tell the king, Oh, also give me a company of guards to protect me against the enemy that lies in wait. He wouldn't do it. He said, no, we're going to step out there. And Father, the one that I've testified about, the one that I've declared his faithfulness and his protective power, who is God, who raises up kings and puts them down, who establishes a thing and it comes to pass. I know he's going to be with me. He shall not fail me. He shall not fail me. I will fix my heart. I will set myself today. I'll Amen. set myself today. Amen. I'll stand still. I will let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Amen. Huh? I will let God be exalted in his own strength. I'll stand and watch the salvation of the Lord. I will be still and know that he is God. 
<laughs> that he is my very present help in diamond trouble. I'll recognize that God is in my midst. He is the one who utters his voice and the earth melts. <laughs> He's the one who controls all things. He establishes the thing and it certainly comes to pass. He's faithful in everything that he said. All the promises of God are yes and amen. Not one thing that he says shall fail. Not one word shall fail. They should all come to pass for he watches over his word to perform it, to hasten it. He spoke over you. 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 He spoke. He prophesied. He proclaimed his word over your life. I want everybody to stand with me right now. Tonight, there's people here in this place and you've been overwhelmed by the uncertainty of that which you have the ability to do. I don't blame you. I'd be overwhelmed too. If I was in your house and had to trust on you, I'd feel terrible. I'd be afraid every day. I'd say, we're not going in the right direction here. I'd bail out. I'd jump ship. I encourage you to jump ship too. Just let that thing go. Cast yourself into the care of God. Thrust yourself into His provision. Whew. Papa's calling you tonight. There's a whole dimension of people. Tonight there's people in here, you've lived under oppression, you've lived under curse, you've lived under torment. And I'm telling you, the anointing of the Holy Spirit is here to break that thing off of you, to change everything about your life, to bring healing to your household. Yeah. Change in your life, change in your heart. There's people in here, you've been tormented by fear. It's kept you back from moving forward in God. You've not been able to stand and see, see the salvation of the Lord. You've not been able to stand and see the outworking of those who ask and God does it. You've not been able to stand and see that whatever you believe, God will do it. You've not been able to stand and see the heirship, the authorityship, the inheritance that God has had in you and has in you now. The greatness that he's called you to because you've been overwhelmed by the arm of flesh by what you can do. I can tell you where to go and dig in a gold mine right now. I can tell you where to go and dig in great abundance right now. Total, total abandonment and give yourself to the Lord. Give your finances to the Lord. Your, thrust yourself into the things of the ministry of the Lord. Go out. I'm going to tell you right now. Listen, just go out. So I said, well, you know, I want to I wanna do the right thing with my finances. And I want to be certain about it. But why don't you just go buy a one-way ticket though, anywhere? And when you get there, go ahead and build a church and praise God, we'll throw in and help you out. And we'll pray for you every once in a while. No, I'm kidding. We'll pray for you all continually. <laughs> Amen. Amen. If you can do that, go. Go. Or you just, you just do the same thing, but right here and throw everything in. And then I, I'm, I'm, I'm so blessed with the abiding place. I'm so blessed with you. I'm going to tell you right now, you, God has given you a charge. God has given you an opportunity to participate with us in what we're doing together. Because somebody said, my goodness, you're still going. We just getting started. Somebody said, you know, right now, right at this very moment, right now we've got to have very close to $100,000 when everything's, well, actually it's a little more for, for, for the church to pay for everything, having to put it up foundation, getting some of the things done there. We got also have a well for it. All the stuff you need for a church. And somebody said, my goodness, $100,000. That ain't nothing. $100,000 threatening you? I thought you were going after 100 million. Well, what were you going to do? What were you going to do with all that faith God gave you? What are you saving it up for? What are you, going to what are you saving all that faith up for? Why don't you go ahead and start using it? Amen. You start using it, it gets strong, it'll get big. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 
Don't worry. My name is on the legal forms to pay August 28th. Don't be concerned. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not worried at all. It's Papa's business. I know this realm. This realm of faith. And I want, I'm, I'm going to continue to move in faith. I'm going to see things explode. I'm going to see things get bigger. People just say, well, you know, they try to figure it out logically. Well, logically, I think it happened like this and that. You don't even know what happened. It's a miracle. And God wants to work the same miracles through you. And I'm going to tell you right now, the miracles that have happened up to this day, they're not slowing down. Amen. We're, we're seating people and we're helping people. We're t we're t we've taken all of our family, all my kids, me, kids, and I've, we've seated them and said, you step into this, you take responsibility, you move in authority of it right now, you begin to believe God for bigger things. Amen. But I'm going to tell you right now, Dad's not slowing down because I'm just getting warmed up. This is fun. We're going to spend so much money and make your head spin. We're going to own so much in God you can't even imagine it. You don't even understand how the bills are going to be paid because you've got to see God as God. As healer, as protector, as perfecter. I'm confident that he should raise my body from the dead. I'm equally confident that it's that much easier for him to heal all my diseases. Yeah. I am certain that he should supply all that I have need of throughout all eternity with a glorious resurrected tabernacle that allows me to see him in all of his glory. I'm certain that the one who owns the cattle on the thousand hills, who uh, commands all things that have brought them into existence, they all consist by him, they are his, who's laid up the, the wealth of the wicked for the righteous in these last days is going to empower me and anyone else that is going to believe and move out like that. And so I don't see any limitations. Do you see any limitations? Amen. Did, how many of you knew that America created a caste system? Did you know that? Yeah. They call it middle class. You know, they're, because they're so political, they never say low class. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right? They didn't say poor. The middle class and the wealthy. It's an aristocracy, according to what they, they've designed it as, there's so many ways. I'll break that thing. See, I'm not even in it. I'm not even in it. I'll break that thing off of you so that you're not in it either. No, I'm breaking it off. I tell you right now, I'm breaking that off thing off of you right now. No, I'm breaking it right now. I'm breaking it. It's a faith realm. It's the exploits of God. It's the exploits of God. Because you get it, because you come under the prince of the power of the air, you come under those things that the demonic realm has created and you limit yourself to this classification, this caste system. I'm breaking off of you too, right up here. I'm breaking everything off of you. Blue collar, working class, whatever. Is it, how, is it how many beans you get? Is it how many tokens you get? You spin it right, we'll let you get, take some time off when you get to be 69. <laughs> when you're too old and worn out to do anything, then the devil will let you go. I said when you're too worn out to do anything, then the devil will release you from your bondage. I'm not living in that. You're not living in that. No. I said, I'll break that thing off of you. Listen to me. About time you start obeying. I'll break that old thing off of you. I'll break that bondage and that affliction off of you. I'll break off that budget off of you right now. <laughs> Honey, come over here and lay hands on her. Come here. There's a special anointing right over here. Break that budget off of her right now. My wife has details. She's got the details and the faith to tell the details how they're going to come out. I said, I'll break that thing off of you right now. I said, I'll break that thing off of you right now. God's not interested in how you think it through. 
God's not interested in how you preserve your life. Blessed are those who, not, who do not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Now all the things that people say you got to do, otherwise you're going to be afraid and concerned, cast out, and have nothing. Working at McDonald's when you're 70. What a lie from hell. In Jesus' name. Look at me. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. That's right. You release it. I know how it is. I know it is. I know how it is. When the Lord first called me in the ministry, I was 21 years old, and I got sick to my stomach. I know how it is. I understand. It's total abandonment. It's no longer in control. It's now letting God be God. Oh, it's much bigger. Oh, huh. if you thought, if you thought you could bless you, <laughs> you watch out. Will you begin to let God bless you? Not everybody will do this. It's too scary. Everybody prays God. Oh, yeah, hallelujah. I pray my Lord and my refuge. Woo! Pray that God has. Yeah, hallelujah. Mountains moving. Praise God. Fear not. No way. But then it starts hitting right at your life. Stomach starts turning. Head starts spinning. Oh no, what are we going to do now? God's calling us to come with total abandonment, to give it all, to step out and begin to move in faith where we got to trust Him. Woo! I tell you right now, you're going to do this. Amen. You're going to do this. Amen. <laughs> you're going to do this. You're going to do this. <laughs> you're going to do this. You're going to do it. All nine gifts of the Spirit. Amen. Yes, everything that you said, everything you asked for so long ago, sitting there in the living room in your house, you're going to do it. Yes, yes, I am. Father heard you. He saw the sincerity of your heart. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, I tell you, get the faith. Give to faith! 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 Here's how to get to faith work. <laughs> oh! 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 Give the pain! This is the end of the world! 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 This is the end Yes, 
Carreve, yes. The Lord is crying out, these things are yours. These things are yours. These things are yours. Take it. 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 These things are yours. Confident. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. 